Some girls just want to watch World Cup. Jeff nailed another draft day. Nailed it. Top five has the 98. I got some more. Jason just loves some Kevin James. Fucking Kevin James. Please note that any comments, jokes, questions, maybe, anything that we say on the History of Bad Ideas is all in good fun, and remember, we insult everybody. Our thoughts, opinions, questions, anything else, actions that we do on the show do not reflect any of our employers, organizations, advertisers, or anyone else that is associated with the History of Bad Ideas. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just a joke. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 359. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. I'm Blake. I'm Jim. And I'm Steve. And I'm Izzy. Wait, what? Where's the intern oh, Hackney? Oh. And this is... <laughs> <laughs> History of Bad Hello. Ideas. See, this is why we like you guys on. You have theme music. You bring your own theme music with you. <laughs> so, sorry, did we interrupt the intern? Is he here too? No, he's not here today. He is oh, not here. Well, well then fuck him. No. <laughs> <laughs> he's sitting on young children this evening. That doesn't well, sound right. Doesn't, oh boy. <laughs> I feel like the intern doesn't come on episodes we're on. He's off you. He's out protesting. So uh, I don't know what he's protesting, but he's out protesting something. <laughs> So. They're only children if he's sitting on top of them. <laughs> Probably. I think he was protesting the uh, bacon-wrapped Oreos. We'll get to that. Everybody Which I, I completely agree. That is completely unnatural. Let's Abomination! Get... I'm in. Let's Abomination. get to the most important thing that has happened in the last week. Nisi. They must be destroyed. Was it Nisi or Nikki? I think it was Nikki from New Zealand. Or was it even Brian? I don't even know. Somebody sent us a link to bacon-wrapped Oreos. And, um, well, we hope he loves a good Oreo challenge. Blake, what's your thoughts on bacon wrapped Oreos? I love a good Oreo challenge to an extent. Mm -hmm. (laughs) This is just plain silly. Yeah. Bacon doesn't make everything good. Jeff disagree. I haven't tried it yet. I, I'm always willing to try. Okay. So do you think it would taste good? Until I try it, I wouldn't. (laughs) I do. You think? Say, Jason, it's not that bacon doesn't make everything good. It's that Oreos make everything bad. What? Steve? (laughs) Well, it was great having you guys on. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Oreos. It's okay. Uh, They're not really cookies. Let's be real, guys. I mean, (laughs) are there people out there that are like, oh, man, Oreo cookie parts. I'm just going to download those by the handful. Nom, 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 nom. No. It's all about that cream. Steve, Steve, you're... Cash rules everything around me. You're talking to those guys. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, uh... They, they probably like those uh, cotton candy Oreos or whatever. You oh, had time. oh no, no, no. Had... It was the, uh... Swedish the, the Swedish fish ones were the worst ones. Oh, God. Those, those ones tasted straight up like lipstick. It was, uh, the coconut... Caramel coconut ones that... Oh, those are good. ...were super funky. Yeah. So we had the Swedish fish ones, and those were pretty... Bleh. They weren't really anything horrible, if I remember correctly. They weren't good, but they. Weren't... I think, I think they grew on me. The more I ate, the more I'm like, mm, okay, I kind of want more now. Until the bo- they weren't enough to go out and buy a second box of them. No, no, guys, no. they were the 2020 of cookies. Don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, are, they, are you guys worse. sponsored by Oreo? If so, I apologize. I was going to say, now you guys know what it's like to eat a lip smacker. So oh. congratulations. Oh. Jim, <laughs> would you try bacon wrapped Oreos? <laughs> I had to go yeah. back to my twelve yeah. year old days of kissing girls for lip smackers. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, you no, want, you're all... you're a big bacon fan there, aren't you, Jim? Uh I like bacon. Uh, hey, wait a minute. Let me clarify. I was twelve years old. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if that came out right or not. It, it, it did. Came out we, the, we when understood. he was kissing twelve-year-olds, okay. supposed to sitting on top of them like the end. 
Uh, so uh, we're gonna have to find them. Uh, I did do the gingerbread Oreos, and uh, last week I picked some up at the store. I ran in to get something. I saw them, and uh, I guess they advertised them on TV. And my kids were like, "We knew you would get them." <laughs> so <laughs> they I, weren't I, in my local store. I looked for them in the Oreo aisle. Well, I ran. We ran in. I ran in. Um, <laughs> Yesterday, they had they had him at customer service <laughs> right there for Jason. As soon as he walked in the door, Mr. Brigger, Mr. Here Brigger, you go. To the customer service desk, please. <laughs> Mr. Brigger, we just got this case returned because it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did go in yesterday real quick, and now this is not the big Kroger's or anything like that. This is like the small country. You know, they only have like two of these type of grocery stores around anymore. And I walked in, and they had candy Some cane. Public? Oreos, which I think they had last year. I think they had last year. Um, so peppermint? Yeah, and then they had some with red in the middle. Uh, I'm not sure which one that is. Swedish Fish? No, it wasn't Swedish Fish. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's just their red food color ones. Is it, uh, any, di- no, is it any flavoring? There's no different flavor, no different flavor with the red They're one. Okay. Um, They're blood. But to fuck your cream. <laughs> I will say... Um, I put it on Twitter and uh, I miss our Oreo challenge, guys. I miss it. So uh, I, I, a lot of I kind of do too. In the actually. year 2020, what's that, Blake? I, I miss the Oreo challenges too. Although I will have to admit, you know, Doctor Bednar did introduce me to something satanic as well, and that was the bacon covered in chocolate. And he forced oh. me to try it at a Christmas party. Now I oh, love chocolate good. and that I love bacon. And so to my surprise, I've always eschewed it, but I tried it, and it was good. But it just didn't feel right. You know what I mean? Oh, no, I it's don't. Like salty it chocolate, means. basically. Yeah, <laughs> it was good. I like the chocolate. I like the bacon. It, they were both good together, but it just didn't feel right. See, I feel like the dark chocolate-covered bacon has more dimension. and Yeah. yeah. Oh, I like yeah. that. Oh, and that bacon's got to be crispy. It can't be oh, that. Ugh. That's correct. What? It can't be, be <laughs> can't be chewy fat bacon. <laughs> no, nope, that's not a good bacon. bacon. It has to be hard. It's like chocolate no, bacon. That, gum that's something. burnt bacon. I don't understand why you people like burnt bacon. Burnt bacon. If you ate a fucking delicious, like that, that's why. If you ate a steak like that, you would be barred from steak houses. That's Jeff, like cow. That's bacon. cow. We're talking about this pig belly. Big. That's right. <laughs> Jeff, I'm with you. I agree with you on the cow part, yes. But yeah, you can give me bank. You can give me bacon limp. You can give it to me hard. I'll, I'll, I'll... Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> give it to me hard. I mean, what I'm saying is, I'll eat any kind of bacon, bacon or give him death. <laughs> Jeez. You know what? Just I don't think... mix it with lip smacker. <laughs> I think we have a title: "Give it to me limp or give it to me hard." But I don't think that's going to pass the censors. Talk <laughs> <laughs> about bacon. Oh, sorry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Talking about bacon, you filthy pig. My bad, my bad. Uh, but I will say the gingerbread cookie or Oreos, not so good. Uh, I mean, they were okay. It was gingerbread. Well, it tastes like gingerbread. Yeah, and gingerbread by itself is not that good. So I, I, I will say I was a little depressed because I miss, I miss you guys. <laughs> it's in the shape of a little boy. You're gonna eat it, right? What? <laughs> oh, <boy. No? laughs> shape of a little man. Oh, the Jesus gingerbread man. Okay. I was like, what are you talking yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Get your, you, you, guys, you guys are disgusting. You know, that's you're salt. the one saying it's the stuff. Style, gingerbread boy. Yeah, you're, you're misinterpreting it. Uh, no, what I was going to say is the gingerbread, like when I was doing the Oreo challenge. Normally they call it gingerbread men, not gingerbread boys, <laughs> but you bring up eating little boys. <laughs> the, Catholic, the Catholic Church does too. Anyways, uh, <laughs> they call them gingerbread boys. <laughs> Uh, anyways, uh, no. So when I was eating these Oreos, I felt like, well, I don't have any of my friends here to do this challenge with. Anyway, wow. It's just me. <laughs> it's just me eating Oreos and that's not good. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it is. Well, I don't know. You know. I have no problem eating Oreos alone. So <laughs> luckily my kids helped out. Uh, so. Oh, you guys are going to go there now too. God. <laughs> Just can't oh. cry in a shower and, and eat Oreos like a man. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me what you do with your children in your spare time, Jason. Anyways, um, Jim, Jeff, since you guys are big game show fans, would one of you guys like to give the breath of science for somebody very famous? Uh, Donald Trump Day? 
<laughs> this past Sunday was the passing of Alex Trebek. No! Breath of silence. Who died on Sunday? Really, Blake? You interrupted the breath of silence. You interrupted the breath of silence. Hold on. What is a breath of silence? <laughs> <laughs> I think Alex would find this funny. Looking down upon us now. So we meet again, Trebek. <laughs> yeah. That what was did a great you, meme. What did you bet? <laughs> Texas. <laughs> Good job. All from the minds of Frank Stewart. <laughs> when, it, you know, when, you, when you beat your arch rival at his own game, was it? they had to fake Sean Connery. <laughs> when you when you when you get From to Quebec. the pearly gates uh, ahead yeah. of your arch rival, yeah, that's what it was. Um, yeah, so Alex Trebek, uh, man, yeah, that that's guy, a bummer, man. He was a fighter, though. That guy fought Who through they, that cancer. Jeez, oh, yeah, yeah. Pancreatic is a no win situation. No, no. What? Who are they going to get to replace him? That's my question. I Rumor mean, you know, the person that they're going to replace him. People are not going to like Vin Diesel. <laughs> Tom Hanks. <gasps> that would work. Yeah, but he's like on deathbed too. I mean, that guy's had, you know, he's like Tom 65 Hanks. years old. <laughs> well, on celebrity Jeffrey, Tom Hanks almost did suffocate the laundry uh, bag. <laughs> no, that was, was a dry cleaning bag. Dry, yeah, dry cleaning, dry cleaning. bag. <laughs> Uh, they keep saying the rumor is Ken Jennings is going to take over because he actually works on Jeopardy anyways. And yeah, um, they signed him to do a deal yeah. in the off season. So it was, it felt, it felt like in an attempt to groom him to take over, but I think, uh, I think if that would happen or not, we, what's Jonathan Frakes up to? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> he would do good. Yeah. Oh, uh, guys, you know who it's going to be. Nobody's going to like it, but it's going to be Ryan Seacrest. Oh, oh fuck it. God, no, okay. then people What's Regis Philbin up to? Uh, you know uh, what? Six feet. Maybe they could get Will Ferrell <laughs> doing his Alex Trebek in person. I would watch that. I would watch Will Ferrell. I, I, I would stop watching Jeopardy if they did that. What else is Will Ferrell up to? <laughs> Nothing. That guy doesn't do anything. Six uh, foot two? Six four. <laughs> six three. Last thing I saw him, it was Casa de Mi Padre. Am I right? <laughs> what? No, nobody. No, no. We watched it. <laughs> nobody else watched that movie. Hmm. All right. Fine. Um, I uh, we could do a top five next week. Who should replace uh, Alex Trebek? Because he's pretty irreplaceable. I think that's a good one. Top five. Nicholas Cage. Oh, yes. I, I mean, I'd be in. That's one through five right there. Nicholas Cage. <laughs> That's the whole premise of your podcast. That's right. <laughs> first off, Stephen Izzy, where can we find you guys at first before we get into it? Oh, oh. you can't. Yeah, we're on you this. You can't uh, find us anywhere. Yeah, we're on that podcast. Everything I learned from movies. You probably heard about it. We're on all the major podcatchers. Uh, we are. Yeah, we are. Wait, uh, what about this whole like we've Cognito thing? Interviewed we've like John C. McGinley, who would also make a great host. Uh, Thomas Jane, who would be hmm, questionable, but I'd watch <laughs> it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we talk about bad movies and uh well, bad to questionable movies and mm-hmm. uh pretty good beer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Check it out. Everything I learned from movies. You guys have been on this show so much that we I, I just forget to tell introduce everybody to you. So <laughs> I think everybody knows who you are. Yeah. So that but I wanna get that in there. Um You guys are so close to our hearts. We let you name one of our pets. You, we right. did. How is Cole Speaking Ranch? Speaking of hmm? Cool Ranch update. Da, 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 da. <laughs> cool Ranch is a very good boy. He's getting quite fat. Uh, so at what age do you eat the rats? Like cook them for dinner? Oh, these are uh, ornamental rats. They're not for eating. So you hang yeah, them from f- the Christmas tree? We eat them Oreos because we just want them to pass on. <laughs> <laughs> you would eat the fuck out of some Oreos, oh, Steve. Would, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's everything they want. Uh, stale trash and cream. <laughs> Sounds like our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't mock Pez. Don't mock Pez. Don't uh, you go there. Uh, speaking of Pez, hey, Jim, what bag of Pez are you yes. on yet so far? I'm still working on that first of the two big bags I bought. <laughs> There's still probably around 20 uh, packages left in this one. Ooh. Or clips, you might say. <laughs> yes. How many cartridges of pets do you have left? 
Jim, when they look for when they take blood from you, are they just going to find Pez remnants in your bloodstream? That's it. No, no I'm impressed. I mean, how long have I had this big, but these two big bags, and I'm still working on the first. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Well, the best part is when they ask for a blood sample, all he's got to do is like expose his arm and lift a little Scooby Doo head, and a little piece of it comes out. <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm just going to raise my neck up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, before we get into everything else, uh, I do want to say, um, I want to say thank you, uh, to Epic. You're welcome. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Steve. Uh, <laughs> Epic Pictures, Epic Pictures, they were on our virtual con, the Corin con, uh, a couple weeks ago, and they sent me, for those on, you know, uh, YouTube, Nail in the Sorry. Coffin, the Rise and Fall and Rise of Vampiro, the ex-wrestler, uh, it's his, uh, do- uh, documentary. They sent me a copy of it that I will be putting up on nerdly.co.uk for a review. Uh, but it was an autographed copy of it. Uh, I'm a huge wrestling fan, so I'm excited to watch it. Uh, hoping to watch it this weekend. So appreciate them sending that to us. And um, real quick, I'll speak of Nerdly. My uh, newest uh, review of Over the Moon, the animated film, uh, from is on Netflix. Uh, that's up on nerdly.co.uk as well right now. Is that a sequel to Over the Hedge? God, no. No, this was actually good. <laughs> this was good, Chad. No, that's ridiculous. It's about a cow jumping over the moon. Okay, that's it. Out. No. No, this is a good film. <laughs> this is oh, actually really oh, good. Oh, I, I legitimately thought it was. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it's about a kid that loses his her mom. Uh, to, uh, she di- Her mom dies, and then her and her father, they're living in China, and um, basically, she seeks sets off to go to the moon because there was this legend that her mom always told, um, and she wanted to prove that it was true. And then it becomes like a trippy Alice in Wonderland film once she gets to the moon, and then she gets back, and it's back down to a family tragedy. And it's really good, though. My kids really like <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, it sounds hilarious! I can't wait. It's on Netflix, you say? Yes, it's a very uplifting show. <laughs> um, but yeah, so check that out. Uh, Jim, what have you watched lately? Uh, let's see. I watched, uh, the sequel, quote, in quotes, to Braveheart. Um. Robert the Bruce? Brave. Robert the Bruce. <laughs> I was just flipping through. I'm like, hmm, I'll turn this on. <laughs> was it any really? good? Did it have the same guy that played the Bruce? Yes. Yeah, Angus McFadden or whatever. <laughs> Angus yeah. McFadden, yeah, played. I, I didn't even know they had a sequel. Well, it's it's pretty much he, he he pretty much was the driving force in making it. Yeah, wasn't it like two thousand six or something or like like ten uh, years? Later? It was. I think even later than that. Let me look it up real quick. I can. But yeah, it was done well, well after Braveheart. Was it any good? Would you recommend it? Uh, 2019 is when it was finished. Oh, oh shit, I'm going to watch another one. You watched huh. some other Robert the Bruce movie. <laughs> some other Angus McFadden as Robert the Bruce movie that wasn't Braveheart. <laughs> uh, yeah. Were you talking about, hey, Steve, were you think the sequel to The Big Lebowski. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was shit. Jesus. <laughs> the Jesus rolls, everybody. Don't fall for it. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to see if there's any other Robert the Bruce films. There's one in 2018 called Outlaw of the King or something like that. That's the only one I can see. Steve, did you actually watch that one? Uh, <laughs> so, Jim, you recommend it? Uh, well, not to Jeff because he hasn't seen Braveheart, but if you were a Braveheart fan, it's, <laughs> it's watchable. How can you be a Braveheart fan, piece of shit? <laughs> Shut your mouth. <laughs> Winner of 14 Academy Awards or some shit like that. But yeah, yeah that's a bad That's movie. why it's a piece of shit. It won over deserving films. <laughs> Such as Babe. Seals. Babe. Babe. That would do pig. That will do pig. Who who later became Much Bacon? Film. <laughs> Speaking of that bacon. That is how I'll dedicated to bacon he is. He's mad that Babe didn't win an Academy <laughs> Award. <laughs> If Gordy got turned into bacon. <laughs> Gordy was a piece of shit movie. <laughs> Look, Babe Pig in the City, I can understand, but <laughs> the original Babe, babe going up City was a piece Ford. of shit movie too. 
Jim, did you? Jim, did you get to watch uh, the Dark Tower? It was on AMC again. Um, I, I did, on AMC? And, and, and I punched myself in the face <laughs> when it was on. <laughs> Does AMC mean something else now? It used to be like American Movie Classics or some shit. Yeah, no, they dropped the pretense that it means anything, and it just means AMC. <laughs> a An- movie channel. Another movie channel. <laughs> yep. Another movie channel. <laughs> Abominable movie channel. Oh. Uh, it's Matrix Reloaded. A movement of the back. <laughs> a Matrix channel. Uh, has anyone else watched anything? Jeff, you see anything this week? Uh, I started watching The 100. Oh, okay. The TV series? The TV series. Do they have a hundred episodes? They do have a hundred episodes. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. Shit. So at least you know when it's going to end. hundred episodes. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Watch, like, the first two episodes. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was told, like, Summer Glau appears in, like, the second or third season, so I was hoping I can get through to watch <laughs> Summer Glau, but... I might have to jump ahead or something. That's dedication. I just want to see Summer Glau. <laughs> hey, I understand. Um, if you guys remember, you guys actually made me watch like a lot of this and talk about it <laughs> on earlier episodes. We did? <laughs> we never yeah. made you watch the 100. <laughs> and you only got, what, six episodes in? I watched the first <laughs> season. Okay. Jim, to my credit... I don't remember yesterday, so you can't fault me for that. <laughs> and Jim, to Jason's credit, he does have a speech impediment. Hey, 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 hey. That's a, that's a brain impediment. Brain impediment, same thing. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Blake, did you watch anything? Uh, I'm almost done with season two of Cobra Kai, and power went out in the middle of the Mandalorian episode two last night so i i'm i had some trauma to deal with here <laughs> i uh i gotta get through mandalorian season uh, episode two we haven't watched it yet uh i keep forgetting that to watch it and everything online uh, i guess it's supposed really? to be a pretty good a- episode and i'm like i can't look yeah. at anything online i can't i'm just I, going did you miss the death of baby too. yoda <laughs> shut up <laughs> I don't want to make a billion dollars. I'm going to kill baby Yoda. <laughs> but Steve, Tenet didn't make a billion dollars. Oh, <laughs> save it. Save it, Jason. We'll be talking about it in our box office news later. Oh, we... <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have opinions. <laughs> and you still like Cobra Kai, don't you, uh, Blake? Yeah. Okay. I have to, get it. It's it's still although the the their their tropes getting a little old where, you know, he and Danny keep missing each other mm-hmm. in regards to not understanding what the other is doing, but mm-hmm. they're both meaning to do well. You know, yeah, like, I'm at the point where you know Johnny Johnny's coming to realization that Cree showing up was a bad idea, and and uh, he was turning the kids into bullies, and that's not what his intention was. So. Oh, yeah, well, wait till you see what happens next when they kill baby Yoda. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus. No, I, I only got to the point where the X-Wing fighter uh, um, intercepts the Mandalorian, you know, so. And they're asking him oh. to ping his IFF, his old, you know, friend or foe, ping him a bob, whether or not he, you know, he's a, you know, empire dude or something. So. Good witch or a bad witch? Yes, correct. I haven't watched the show. And that is a, that's a great cameo. From the star of the show Kim's Convenience, yeah, with the pilot, yeah, the pilot of the uh, of one uh, of the X Wings, yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it's it's uh, yeah. So I'm looking forward to the last two episodes of Cobra Kai, and I would like to finish the Mandalorian probably after I get done with this. But no, wait a minute. I'm sorry. The new season of The Curse of Oak Island is on tonight. I'm oh. DVR and that. I'm missing that because of this podcast. But they found buttons. More buttons. I'm excited. I'm excited. And Barry Wood, man. What's more exciting than that? Come on. I don't, I don't know. Limp Bacon? Maybe Limp Bacon? I'm not sure. 
My bacon. Uh, it's Canadian bacon up there. So oh. no. Okay. So, so Blake, before the season starts, of what do you think? They find the treasure. Find... Don't spoil it for me. No, no. Do you think they're going to find anything of like substance? Or yes, just, they'll it, find some more buttons and some more or coins. Or is it going to be more buttons and more buttons, uh, more coins and buried wood? This rock looks like it's kind of sharp. Maybe it was fashioned from a weapon. <laughs> or not. We could see it. We could see a Templar cross here in, in the rock fascia. They're going to find a button, but it's going to be in the shape of a butt. Ooh. <laughs> or in the Those shape of a cross. cross. Oh. I don't yeah. know how you're you gonna still find hair. It. You're gonna find hairpins, probably too. Maybe it, a buckle. Blake, is it kind of like Walking Dead? You're just pot committed right now to this to see it through. <laughs> Correct. Okay, just check. I'm gonna. And, I'm gonna when this whole COVID thing's over next summer. I'm driving to Oak Island, man. <laughs> I thought it was, you think it's gonna be over next summer? <laughs> well, yeah. Biden won the election. It's already being cured. <sighs> yeah. They, they're already getting ready to get. Uh, they already have the uh, vaccine. Vaccine. Get ready to uh, well, finish testing. That's right, they man. Announced, they, announced, they announced that like a day after they announced Biden's victory. Wait, wait. So you guys live in a state where the governor didn't come on the other day and say, "Hey, guys, guess what? There's Sunday. this virus called uh, coronavirus." Sunday. <laughs> yeah, he was Sunday. Like, hey. You we guys have... might want to wear a mask or something because our <laughs> hospitals are inundated with you dumb shits. We just got our mask ordinance. Yep, we got uh, it just Sunday. Sunday. Immediately when it was like, well, Trump's not going to be president, our governor finally came on and said, hey, guys, I'm, I'm going to do this uh, two-week period where everyone should stay at home. And me and my wife, who have been that way for eight months now, uh, oh, kind of told the for, TV to go fuck itself. I'm, I, I'm ready to do this for a whole other year. Like, everybody else can go fuck themselves. <laughs> I got well, think about right. it. You've been living in a free state this whole time. Everybody else has oh. been in lockdowns. It hasn't worked. And our hospitals are inundated because of it. Yep. 3,000 cases a day. Don't worry, it's that's only not, a dozen deaths. That's not 3,000 like hospital admissions. 3,000 cases, that's it? Yeah. We're a mask fuckers. You. Yeah, we'll but see, guys. like, we're a little tiny state. That's like half our population yeah. every day. We're underachieving. <laughs> our state is smaller than, like, Cincinnati. You uh, know what I mean? Ohio it, it had 5,000. We're number one. We're number one. <laughs> we're not even number for one. Oh. We're number 12. We're number 12. <laughs> <laughs> on a positive note, though, I did see that today, Steve, on, uh, I guess it's not a positive note, but I did see that online, <laughs> and uh, people on Twitter were mocking him. And uh, the one, I forget what newspaper said, uh, it was basically Utah governor says, hey, remember what I, what I said before? Ignore that. Sorry. Yeah, my yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now that we might get uh, funding anyway. Yeah. Fuck that guy. <laughs> well, he was able to declare a state of emergency so yeah, he could exactly. get money for it. Uh, it's fucking ridiculous living in a Republican <gasps> state. There, I said it. Yeah. Yeah. Down hey, the you hall. Know what, though, Utah was a hell of a lot more purple than you thought it would ever be. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so who is the worst fictional president? <laughs> no, no, we're talking about uh, TV that. shows we watch, and we just oh, watched uh, Truth Finders. Uh, Truth, Truth Seekers. Seekers. Truth you still Seekers. can't remember, the name, can't remember the name of the show. I can't remember the name of the show. Oh, on it's Amazon? Great. Simon Pegg? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's actually really, really fun. Yeah, it was all right. I enjoyed it. How many like episodes it. is that? Eight. Like eight? Okay. Eight, like, 22-minute episodes or whatever, so it's a pretty quick watch, but... Mm. Yeah, it's basically uh, was it Nick Frost and Simon Pegg and a kind of kind of ghost adventures kind of thing, but yeah. it's also tied in with a cell phone company and <laughs> it it's it's all right. It's a like it's like a cell phone and cable provider. Yeah, Malcolm McDowell's in it. Yeah, is this on Quibi? Uh, it's on Amazon Prime. <laughs> oh, Brian's not here. Damn it, Jim. <coughs> Jim, put a dollar in for me. Dollar in the dollar yeah. in the thing. I'll take what is a quibby for two hundred, Alex. <laughs> is that not how the categories work? It is. <laughs> um. So, like Stephen, as he said, who is the worst fictional president? Uh, we had we had an options this week on Bad Ideas podcast uh, on Twitter. We had uh, Francis Underwood for House of Cards. We had uh, Selena Meyer from Veep. We had Dwayne Camacho from Idiocracy. <laughs> uh, and we had uh, Will Cooper from Pixels. Fuck that guy. 
Uh, let's see here. Um, played by Kevin James. Hey, wait, uh, quick question. Mm-hmm. Selena Meyer in Veep. Who plays that? Uh, Julia Lewis Dreyfus. Louis Dreyfus. Isn't Louis. she the Veep though? She starts out as the Veep and yeah. then she becomes. Oh, but the they don't change it to Prez, Prez after that, or nope. nope. <laughs> she actually becomes the president twice throughout the run of the show. Oh, like its president loses it, gets it back. Oh, interesting. So, interesting. Uh, fun fact: the uh, there's a giant carrot pillow that appears in a couple of episodes. One of the characters has. Mm-hmm. I know the gal who makes those. You can find those at Jumbo Jibbles on Etsy. Wow. And Amy is awesome. She had no idea it was going to be in the show either. She was just like, huh, I'm, you know, I'm shipping a couple of, you know, six foot carrots to Hollywood. That's cool. And she was like, holy shit, my pillows are on me. <laughs> <laughs> That's all she has to put on her Etsy page is just a picture of that. <laughs> just Pretty that. Much. <laughs> uh, let's see. I got to go with Kevin James and Pixels. Oh, yeah. Kevin James in anything is the worst. Thank you. Uh, nah, Jim, who did you pick? kissing up to Jason. Come on now. Jim, who did you pick? Uh, I just pick anybody not uh, Camacho. Yeah, because he's the best president. Him and Harrison Ford, neck and neck. I, I mean, he, he does what you should do. He finds the smartest man alive and gets them to try and uh, uh, fix the problems. We could use some <laughs> leadership like that. I a I'll... mask. I'll be honest. No, I thought you were supposed to deny everything that didn't help you get rich. Uh, first off, it is November 10th, and I don't know why Utah is freaking out. Corona's gone. COVID's gone. It just disappeared. November 4th, done. Out of here. Uh, right. so, J- so, Jason, you, you're going to have people over this week? Fuck no. Uh, no, I'm just doing this just because. <laughs> <laughs> what, if, what if I have proof of my, uh, of my uh, COVID vaccine shot? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, but I do have a nice <laughs> studio that we, we built. It's really lonely I know, in here. It's great. It's really Glad I was in it once. <sighs> Blake, I think you were in it twice. I'm, I'm glad you're sitting in a nice, comfy chair, Jason. <laughs> it is a really nice chair. I'll be honest. I built this studio, Jim, just to get you to buy a chair so I could keep it. That's all I did. I know. (laughs) (laughs) It's a long con. To spend a couple thousand dollars on this studio. Fuck yeah, I'm going to get a chair out of it. (laughs) I'm going to get a $129 chair. (laughs) Man, you're good. What can I do to get a $149 chair out of Jim? (laughs) First, build an extra room in our basement uh, expansion. No, no. This is then the long cause of disease. First, well, first you got to get approval from the homeowners yeah. association and your gated community. Screw that homeowner <laughs> association. <laughs> Screw that. First thing you did was a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Seven years in the making, Jim. I was Way waiting for a chair. Way. Do you have an HOA license for your podcast, Jason? <laughs> no one talk. <laughs> Hey, Some may Jim. say it's not worth 30 cents an episode, but that's how you play the long game. <laughs> 30 cents? He's charging me five bucks in an appearance to get on here. <laughs> so, Jim, you're right. The first idea was get a podcast. Second was don't invite Jim as a host. Invite his brother, Jeff. Yeah, <laughs> Four right. years later. Hey, Jim, you want to be on the show? <laughs> five years later. Build you a studio. Genius. <laughs> Jason Brigger, a very patient man. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> a very patient podcast. I will say very it's a very comfy podcast. chair. It is a comfy chair. Uh, it is the comfy chair. The best part is, Jim, when, when I'm sitting here in the studio, I have a shirt on, but no pants or underwear. So your, your chair is really nice now for me. <laughs> oh, dear God. Please turn the video off. <laughs> You want me to stand up, Steve? Hold on, hold on. Oh, sorry. No, no. I don't. I don't want to see you Porky Pig in that chair. <laughs> I'm just picturing Homer Simpson. Oh man, someone's was sitting in my ass crack. <laughs> ass groove, and we ass discussed groove, that yeah, a couple yeah, so weeks ago. I we did discuss that. I, we already discussed Jim's ass groove as being ruined. Sweet, <laughs> sweet can. So, anyways, what what's the worst? Of- this might take a while. <laughs> Uh, worst fictional president uh, in last place, uh, uh, Camacho from Idiocracy at five point six percent. In third grade, 
Third place, Selena Meyer from Veep at 11.1%. That's who I voted for. In the inappropriately titled Veep. Yes. And <laughs> number one winning 50%. To 33.3%, which is pretty impressive considering that... Repeating, of course. Yes. Francis Underwood <laughs> was pretty much scum of the earth, and so is Kevin Spacey. Will Cooper from Pixels beat out Francis Underwood. Congratulations, Woo! Will. Kevin Woo! James is worse than Kevin Spacey. You Woo! heard it here first, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, one of them we just hate on premise. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, they may both have boys in their basement. Anyways, moving on, allegedly. Um, let's see here. Um, Jeff, I, I, I did get... Uh, I haven't watched anything, but Jeff, you're a tabletop fan. I did uh, get a couple new games here uh, lately. All right, let me judge your games. <laughs> uh, I got Zombie Kids Evolution. Have Don't you seen know what that? that is. So it's a family game of basically zombies, but you have four, uh, four or five rooms... And you can go in and destroy the zombies. But the cool part is um, every game that you play, you put like a little brain sticker on it. And it's kind of like Charterstone. Like once you get to like, I think you be, you play the game five times, you open up an envelope and it changes, uh, gives you a new scenario. And then you do so it's it again. a new legacy game. Yeah. So uh, I was pretty happy with that one. Um, or I, well, I was happy finding it. Sorry, because I'm trying to find all these games like where the hell, you know, if we're going to be trapped inside for the next six months, it's like, okay, uh, let's see here. We got Draftosaurus. Have you ever heard that? What? No. That's a, um, it's a family game, but it's also, um, um, we could all play it without issues. It's um, basically your. Um, well, I hope so. <laughs> Ooh, can I guess? I hope can I guess? we can play games is it a... without issues that your six year old can play. <laughs> yeah. is, is it a dinosaur that drinks beer? Yes, that's exactly it. <laughs> yeah. Man, you son of a bitch! Basically, you everybody gets it's kind of like sushi go. Everybody gets the six. Um, they get six dinosaurs, um, and then you're trying to build a, dra- a park, a Jurassic Park, and uh, that doesn't fail. And um, you know, one little pen is uh, you have to have two of the same dinosaurs to breed to get points. Then you got to get another yeah, one. Yeah. Dinosaurs fuck. Then you got to get yeah. um, another one is that, um, you know, it goes by points two, four, six, eight, ten, like in Sushi Go. But none of the dinosaurs can be the same species. And then another one is all of them are the same species. So you pass the dinosaurs around each time. Um, and so it's uh, a yeah, we played that. Like a dino orgy. Yeah. I get it. Nice little swingers club. Yeah. I'm in. We played that three <laughs> times. Um, and that we just got and that one. Bloody Mary appeared and they had to cancel the game. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> what is that? Um, so yeah, those are the two games that we've gotten. And then we bought Planet uh, a couple uh, weeks ago too. Um, and we played that twice. Uh, we want to get back into that. That one, you have like a 3D um, globe and basically you're putting um, geography, uh, like Concept. terrain. Yeah, terrain on it. And then based on that, you're building a planet. Uh, And there's 12 terrains you eventually take over, you can put on it. And then you're trying to build, uh, get species to go on it and that too. So you're trying to pick cards Can you make your planet like a planet from the Star Wars universe? You could. Or the entire planet is the same terrain. The entire planet is desert or (laughs) ice or forest (laughs) or swamp (laughs) or robots. I don't know. Oh, (laughs) lava. Lava. Fucking clouds. (laughs) It's one non-ending city. (laughs) <laughs> That's right. Uh, so that one's that one's fun. Uh, we gotta get more into that one. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm stocking up, Jeff. I'm stocking up here. Um, and then I got that Western game that uh, Miami Town that uh, Scab Jeff talked about. Um, Western Legends. Yes, Western Red Legends. Dead Redemption. Yeah. Western. What'd you say? <laughs> Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> no, I got that on PlayStation. Uh, I got sorry. Western Legends. Uh, I got that. My parents asked what I wanted for Christmas. I said, Well, I just bought it. I'll give it to you. You can wrap it up and give it back to me on Christmas Day. So, <laughs> um, and since since they're not having people over, basically they're just going to drop them off on our front porch. Thanks. Can I just keep the game in November? Can I just keep it and pretend you gave it to me on Christmas Eve, <laughs> please? So, yeah, why well, go through the motions? So just hey. Give me money for the game. We're in, we'll, we'll, we'll say you gave us the best present ever. Well, it's a $70 game, Cash. and we got it. I got it uh, at my house. It was delivered to my house. And uh, my wife, I looked at my wife. I was like, 
can I just open this and say, forget it, I'll find something else you can buy me because I really want to play this game. She's like, no, you got to put it away for Christmas. I'm like, damn it. So, so Jeff, when, <coughs> when you and Jim are allowed coming back over, you know, when COVID's gone, hopefully sooner than later. 2040? I hope not. I miss game nights. Uh, January 21st. No, that's right. January 21st. That's right, Blake. <laughs> um, when it's all gone, you know, we got lots of new games, Jeff. Lots of new games to play. So, uh, let's see. Lots of new games to play. Uh, Blake, would you like to do the news of the, or listener feedback? Sure. Time right. for the bottom listener feedback. Who's it sponsored by? By the Curse of Oak Island. <laughs> it's the gift never stops giving, like this first guy. Brought to you by Buttons and Wood. <laughs> <laughs> buttons and Buried Wood. I think we named a title that already. Uh, from from Big D. <laughs> a pants. <laughs> Number one fan. Known as. <laughs> Doug? It says, uh, the 2020 National Toy Hall of Fame inductees are Baby Nancy, Sidewalk Chalk, and Jenga. Thoughts? So we, we, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. Uh, yeah. I love... Couple. Several. Uh, I love that Doug always brings up the Toy Hall of Fame because it's pretty cool um, that we always talk about. Baby Nancy was the doll... For Risk the, didn't make it. Risk did not. Baby Nancy was the first doll for Shindana Toys, a California company mm-hmm. launched in 1968. Uh, the not-for-profit black community self-help organization um, emerged in the aftermath of the Watts riots in Los Angeles and helped them uh, make this doll, the first African-American doll that went pretty much mainstream. So there you go. Huh. Hey, hey. That's kind of cool. And is well, anyone else what just about surprised Sidewalk, Sidewalk Chalk? Chalk and Jenga weren't already in the Toy Hall of Fame? Oh, no, okay. no, no. Well, yeah. You know, although someone who's been following the toy hall of fame since they opened, I knew they weren't in it. Uh, <laughs> although we, we, we did debate whether or not sidewalk chalk qualifies as a toy. Mm-mm. Yeah. That's, <laughs> it's not a toy, I guess. Well, yeah, yeah. it's annoying as it's, hell. I hate yeah, it. It's, it's like the rock and roll hall of fame. You know, they let Whitney Houston in. Mm. Wait, is construction paper considered a toy? I think it might be. So a toy is really anything that can entertain kids? Yeah. Or more Ooh, than car keys? Yeah. Are car keys considered a toy? Definitely. Because they're shy. I think keys car toys. keys are. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm voting for car keys next year. You have a what, Jim? A pointed stick gets put in next to the toy hall of fame. Stick Sharp hoop is it? Sharp um, scissors. We do have breaking news that next year one of the nominees is going to be Tide Pods. Just to let you guys know. So. Yes! Yeah! They're and delicious ba- and cleansing! Zombie <laughs> dust. Bath. Wait. Or bath salts. <laughs> bath salts. <laughs> that, I think that's that, for the Millennial Hall of Fame. Yeah, that's going to be the early 20s Hall of Fame. <laughs> uh, what else you got, Jeff? Nope. No, speaking okay. of Hall of Fame, I did watch the, uh, the Halloween, not Halloween, the Hall of Fame <laughs> induction ceremonies. The rock and roll? Yeah, for rock and roll. They had Whitney Houston, the Doobie Brothers, Depeche Mode, Nine Inch Nails, T Rex. Why did uh, they were talking in? about the Toy Hall of Fame? I was going to ask what uh, Baby Nancy had to say in her speech. <laughs> Why was Whitney Houston in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? No, they, well, it's not really just Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's kind of like popular music hall of fame i guess so this is the most the most ill-conceived naming of a thing since veep so <laughs> it's almost yeah, like pretty sidewalk much, right? chalk being included well, one, i think people limit their definition of what rock and roll is mm-hmm. i mean rock and roll you know pretty much and from the 50s pretty much any of the popular music after the 50s has its basis in rock and roll and rock and roll has its basis in in blues and country. So well, and l- let's be fair, nobody's a bigger fan of the rock than Whitney Houston. Welcome wow. to wow. wow! Oh, I got it now. <laughs> wow! You were thinking of Dwayne Johnson, weren't you? I was. <laughs> 
and I then they went. Bobby Brown. Then it went from Dwayne Johnson to the this. movie The Rock, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, still don't get it. Uh, Blake, did they have performances? No, because they had to do everything via Zoom, mm-hmm. and Skype, because they couldn't get together because of uh, the Rona, and uh, so yeah, it was it was pretty cool. You know, you had you know individuals. You know, like uh, like Charlie Theron uh, inducted yeah. mm-hmm. um, Depeche Mode, but you know it's really scary looking at Depeche Mode and watching their performance stuff, and it's really shocking when you look at them and realize how old they look, and then you realize, oh shit, I'm I'm old now too. Oh shit, they were big thirty five years ago. <laughs> uh, you know, do they yeah. look worse than who? The who? The who? Yeah. Do they look worse than the who? Because they look pretty bad. Uh. Nobody really looks worse than the Who. No, and well, th- even the Rolling Stones, as terrible as they look these days, are better looking than the Who. Yeah. But, uh, by the no, way, doesn't the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame know about yeah. holograms anymore? Tupac was like ten years ago. <laughs> you yeah. can guess well, the performances. They, they inducted Biggie Smalls uh, into yeah. it, so notorious B I G. And mm. another one. Yeah, so he he they they inducted him and uh, as well. He was interesting to watch, as you know. I like that. Yeah, I was. I, I liked it. Trent Reznor, would, you know, had a pretty good speech, and I you know I like Nine Inch Nails and Did you see T Rex Academy Award you know, winner is, Trent Reznor? Yeah. yeah. Yes, Academy Award winner Trent Reznor. Yeah, he he talked about you know his stuff that he's doing now for movies as well, but. uh but yeah, T Rex is pretty good. I always forget about T Rex, and you know, but uh, you know, old glam rock kind of stuff. And but yeah, it's, it, it was all pretty good. It was it's it's good if you like Doobie Brothers. I think they start out with Doobie Brothers. And uh, they kick they kick it off with them, and so it's, it's like almost as if, it's almost as if now every year they're not like inducting the best at the top of the cream cream of the crop that they need to get in. It's like, okay, we're going to take somebody from this genre. We're going to take somebody mm-hmm. from this genre. We got to go back and get somebody from the late sixties, early seventies. We need to get the seventies guys. We need left? to get the eighties guys. You know, Which we need to get the nineties. You... Yeah. Did you, by the way, I, I like T-Rex back when uh, they had their lead singer, Tammy. And they were traveling as Tammy and the T-Rex. I have no clue what that reference is. Uh, it's a 1993 movie starring Denise Richards and Paul Walker. Watch it tonight. Oh, shutter. I, I was going to say, uh, Steve, you hit the wow. wrong. Wow. With those two as the lead, <laughs> how can they go wrong? Uh, it's also got Terry Kaiser, AKA Bernie. Yep. <laughs> my, uh, Steve, my bad. Uh, I know nothing about music. So th- I, it, that just, that killed me. Sorry. Uh, That's a lot. You know nothing about Jason. Just don't stay music. Yeah, but I can fake it on some stuff. That's what she said. Um, uh, real quick though, on music, uh, she Foo said Fighters. That to you? Yeah, Foo Fighters is releasing a new album. Did you see that? In February. Yeah, they were on Saturday Night Live this week. Well, about February. And they have a concert. They have a concert, <laughs> they have a concert this Friday night, or no, this uh, Saturday night. Oh. Uh, it's like fifteen bucks. You can uh, buy it on uh, watch it online. Mm-hmm. Um, it starts at I think eight o'clock Eastern time. But yeah, you can look that up and find the Foo Fighters will have a live concert they're playing. Yeah, they they were on Saturday oh, Night Live this past weekend. So it was Dave Chappelle yeah. and them. Um, it was a good show. So oh, it was all right. Uh, let's see here, Blake. It was on. good. <laughs> the Aunt Jemima skit. Oh my god! Hilarious. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that had more potential than what it did. I, I thought they they could have done so much more with that skit. Pete Davidson as Count Chocula was amazing. <laughs> just, just Maya Rudolph. I'm Aunt Jemima, and then everybody almost lost it. <laughs> uh, I did like Kenan Thompson as uh, Uncle Ben's rice. <laughs> Uncle Ben. <laughs> You could do so much more. I only know rice. (laughs) (laughs) White rice, brown rice, yellow rice, rice. Spanish rice, Spanish (laughs) rice, (laughs) bismatic. But they could have done so much better with that skit. They could have gone a lot further than they did. So do you you think what he pointed him at and said, look at Pete Davidson's lips. (laughs) (laughs) Is that hand lips? (laughs) 
And then Pete, did Pete Davidson sh- spitting out his teeth during the skit was pretty funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Count Chocula did that. And then I did like Maya Rudolph. If Count Chocula is chocolate, well, I'm chocolate too. You don't need to fire me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Blake, keep going. What's Moving the Needle podcast said? <laughs> uh, Moving the Needle podcast. Who would sing a television song the best? David Lee Roth, Panic at the Disco, or Phil Collins? Television theme song. I'm Dan just Dave, DJ Phil Collins. And everywhere I go, people talk. Yeah, yeah exactly. It, David it doesn't Lee even Roth. matter the theme song. It's David Lee Roth every time. All the way. I'm going yeah, Phil Collins say, sounds I'll like say. all his songs are television theme songs already. You're right. He's perfect. You take the good, you take the bad, you put him up, and then you have the facts of life. Woo! <laughs> the facts of life. <laughs> Is that David Lee Roth? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, my wonder. Oh. Right, so new. <laughs> we only picked topical wow. sitcoms. <laughs> Whatever happened wow. to you with predictability? <laughs> the man, the Why do you boy. sound He's like Randy TV. Newman? <laughs> he does sound like Randy Newman. <laughs> <laughs> time out, time out. There's only one person on this show that can do Randy Newman. Jeff, go ahead, take it away. Right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot. I don't know why it makes you laugh every Randy. time. That makes you laugh. That's all I know. <laughs> it's a terrible impersonation. But you know what? And it's and it's not even what Randy Newman did. It was uh, an impersonation of what Family Guy had Randy Newman doing. <laughs> but it makes me laugh because now every time I watch a Pixar film, I'm just like, <laughs> fucking Randy Newman. <laughs> you got a friend in me. Shut the hell up, Randy. <laughs> oh, okay, moving on. What we got, your play? Well, we got from Corrections. I guess we got uh, another one from Doug. Oh. He said, um, Blake, that is Peter Jennings. That is from Canada, not Dan, rather. <laughs> I believe we, we established that last week. I was corrected on the spot. But it's still Well, fun. I don't think we mentioned that it was Jennings. We said it wasn't rather, but. Uh, was we couldn't anyway. remember who it was. I could remember who it was. but it's I It's okay. Dan Jennings rather. is ours now. <laughs> He's been here long enough. He's like Jim Carrey. He's ours now. <laughs> Yeah, he's like Alan Trebek. Trebek. Yeah, yep. One of us. Where's Trebek being buried? Us. That's right here. That's right. Come and get him, Canada. What is America? Uh, they're not allowed south of the border at the moment, so we're safe. <laughs> yeah, they're they're like, well, we'll 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 wait it out. Yeah, yeah because there's a they're lo- not allowed south of the border, or they, we're not they built a, they built a wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Izzy, there's a lot of Canadians going, man, I wish I could get to America right now. It's so good down there. <laughs> Those guys have it made. <laughs> they know what it's about. All that freedom just gushing out of their pores. <laughs> that election was smooth as hell. We should go down there. Oh, you know what? I am tired of having a good looking, sensible leader. I should go to America. <laughs> you know, class, class, class. That's all I think of when I think of America. Not a bunch of drunken fucking hillbillies of the world. They definitely don't live above the meth lab of uh, of North America currently. That's right. They prefer the illegitimate son of Fidel Castro. No. <laughs> This has more politics in it this week than we did than it did last week when we were doing the elections. <laughs> uh, on a positive, they had to build a wall to keep us out from getting prescription low cost prescription medicine. I will say oh, that them and their free health care, fucking bullshit. <laughs> I I will say that our election, uh, the last two elections, national elections, I should say, we have had really good uh, uh, view, uh, listenership downloads. For those episodes, so I'm hoping that there's another national uh, election in like three months. I will jump our numbers up again. So that's what we're hoping. <laughs> that's everything I learned from movies on all the major podcasters. <laughs> Check it out, guys. What else we got, Blake? Uh, from beside a geek regarding Star Trek bartender Quark or Guinan. <laughs> False. It's Guinan. <laughs> Well, well I mean, we wanted Jason to try to read it. Uh, so. Bonus points if Jason pronounces those names correctly. Quark and Gina. Guinan. <laughs> Quark or Whoopi Gina? Goldberg. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you like that, Jim? Um, Quark or Gina. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Giant on you, crazy time. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to let the Star Trek nerds handle this one. Go ahead, Steve. Oh, is that me? Okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> oh, God, Steve, we're the Star what? Trek nerds. I got to go with Quark. I, oh, Quark is great. He's one of my favorite characters. I think we discussed this uh, a couple times ago when we were on, and we were talking about, like, top five Star Trek characters or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I'm pretty sure Steve already uh, subscribes to the Ferengi religion. I mean, you know, the, <laughs> was it rules? Oh, God. The rules of acquisition. The acquisition, that's it. Isn't Quark, like, a tabletop game with dice? Isn't that a, qu- a game? Quarkle. Oh, Silence, noob. Corkle, thank you, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. Same thing. Still awful. Uh, what else we got here? Yeah, I, I, I think Guinan's role was basically like, yeah, she was she was a nice ear as a bartender and everything, but is always like, I'm so wise and knowledgeable, but there's absolutely nothing I can do to push the plot forward or do anything helpful. Well, Steve, because she's like 10,000 years old. Her species like lives forever. And so she's she's found out long ago. You can't tell people what to do. They just hate you. So she just yeah. sits back and waits for them to fuck their lives up. Yeah, yeah. she has the uh, was a Cassandra syndrome. She tells people exactly what's <laughs> going to happen and they still fuck it up. Yeah. yeah. 10,000 years old. That must be one dry guy. Now. Anyway. <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll be here all night. Uh, Blake, what do we got? Get get this back on track. Uh, it's Fuck from uh, track. Liam or Liam, depending upon where you're at from the world. Does Hobie have observers to count the ballots for the Flappy Awards? I hope Many, not. <laughs> not. <Many. laughs> this is a big year. So. Uh, observers. I mean, by observers, you mean those of us who cast the votes uh, are the same ones that count the votes <laughs> then yes we observe but. we do it on air though we do make our votes on air jeff that is true despite well, what about how what, corrupt what about the despite how corrupt we are in? what's that jeff what about the people who send stuff in i mean do we have observers no, for their ballot? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I know for a fact you guys don't have observers. Like, for example, this year when we're going to be presenting the movie of 2020. Yes, the best Woo! movie of 2020. Oh. We'll see of everything I learned from movies. See, Stephen is here doing one. Which Nicolas Cage movie will it be? <laughs> Only time will tell. Will it be <laughs> Grand Isle? <laughs> or I think it's the only one that's officially come out this year yet. Primal? But, Color but, Color but there's Rams. one coming up next week. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Spoilers, it's going to be up there. <laughs> sure. Spoiler alert. It rhymes with Smantity Smiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we do have a lot of people co- uh, doing floppy awards this year. It's going to be a little bit different, uh, but uh, we're still going to do it. Uh, we figure if the Country Music Awards can do it, we can too. Um, so we are going to be doing the floppy awards. They'll be released Christmas week. I believe is usually when it happens. So usually it's new year's week, but new year's week. Okay. My bad. Um, but yeah, so there you go. Uh, we have a lot of, uh, great podcasts that are doing it this year and, uh, and be the geek. Um, so really looking forward <laughs> to it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what, let's wrap this up here, Blake. Uh, it's from Professor Number One, Doctor Number One, who always comes last. Should DC dump Amber Heard from their films since Johnny Depp has been forced to exit the Fantastic Beasts franchise due to quote not so nice things coming out of their relationship? She accused him of uh, abuse, uh, which is not to be taken lightly. <laughs> but then. He accused her of it, and basically they're both going back and forth, uh, just hating each other. And, it's essentially uh, a definition of toxic relationship. Yes. So, th- well, that's what happens when you marry your dad. <laughs> toxic marriage. Yeah. I mean, there's only one solution, guys. Here it is. Check it out. She's Grindelwald or whatever now. Who's that? She steps oh, in the franchise as Grindelwald, has a relationship with Jude Law, all is right in the J.K. Yeah. Rollins universe. Wait, what? They we already re- cast. reset J.K.'s toxic relationship with uh, with people. But, the, but they already recast Grindelwald. It's Mods Mickelson. Oh, really? That's what they said uh, today. Oh. oh, so that's why they got rid of Johnny Depp. Well, then fuck him. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, they really didn't care about all that stuff with Johnny Depp. They just didn't yeah, yeah. like his performance yeah, in the last they're, they're movie. They're just like, what, we can get Mads? Uh, shit. 
Um, <laughs> Johnny, you're shit canned. From <laughs> can we recast Amber not. Heard yet with literally anybody else? No, <laughs> Emma Roberts sucks. Okay, fine, we'll keep Amber Heard. <laughs> uh, Johnny Depp, you're fired. Hey, did you hear this about Johnny Depp? Oh yeah, that's the reason why we did it. Yes, that's why. Totally. Wasn't because we like Mads Mikkelsen better. No, uh, I <laughs> I have no idea. I guess people people online do not like Fantastic Beasts and where to find them, like that franchise. They, like, because it hints that su- that characters might be gay, and that goes against their good I, religious upbringing, even though it's a story about wizards who are trying to murder their parents. No, I, 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 I didn't <laughs> like it because the main Jason character might be retarded. <laughs> That's the reason I don't care for it. No, no, Steve. He's Jason just definitely Harry on the Potter spectrum. Harry Potter fans aren't liking it. Yeah, the Harry Potter fans aren't liking it. Not people in general, because people suck in general. But oh, well. And I don't know anything about this at all. Nor did I care. I, I found it really difficult to keep watching. You know, the whole, you know, fantastic zoo in his suitcase was, you know, pretty boring. Is well, it- okay. It, so, so with the Amber Heard thing, do you think if Charlize Theron even remotely expressed interest in becoming Aquaman's fuck buddy or whatever in the series, they'd be like, well, Amber Heard got fired. Oh, Amber yeah. Heard, yeah. They, they, they would yeet her faster yeah. than a baby. <laughs> Amber who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I watch Have anything with Charlie Theron in it. Mm, even uh, Aeon Flux. Ooh, sure. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you're going to be an apologist. Okay. okay, guys, now I have to ask Amber Heard or Mia Jovovich? Mia Jovovich all the way. <laughs> she did I mean, Resident what? Evil. I'm doing Jovovich, yeah. We're rooting for her. Well, she's in the Monster Hunter franchise. I, I'm just saying, if, if Mia Jovovich had expressed interest at a certain <laughs> point, would they be like, Amber who? I'll be honest. I think if Megan Fox expressed interest, oh. they'd be like Megan who? Oh. Or Amber who? I think Honestly, still. Yes. I, doesn't <laughs> Jovovich only work for her husband anymore? Paul Pretty Anderson. much. Well, since they got married, yes. You mean Paul W.S. Anderson, who I am really yes. hoping to get on the podcast here in the next week or two? Yes. <gasps> no, 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 no. Come no. on. Paul Ask Anderson. why his wife doesn't work for other people. Paul W.S. Anderson. Oh, we'll be talking about Mia like the entire time, I'm sure. Guys, I don't know if you listen to our podcast or not, but Steve would drop my ass in a hot second. He would. To just catch a glimpse of Mia Jovovich, so. I, I'll be honest, I would probably drop, drop Jeff in a heartbeat if I could see that, too. Sorry. Great. Uh, yep, because his relationship with Jeff is very <laughs> similar to our relationship. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> and not just sex. <laughs> The sex is only part of it, Steve. Come on. It's deeper than we that. We have a marriage that we really maintain. Does Mila have rats? Just asking. Uh, <laughs> I'll be honest. If any female actress wants to work for Aquaman 2, I think they would drop Amanda Heard. I don't think anybody cares to do Aqu- Aquaman 2. Uh, yeah, Amanda Heard? Whatever. Uh, Amber Heard? <laughs> Jeff, can you give me an intro to News of the Geek? It's time for another installment of the News of the Geek. Okay, J- Blake, I told you this was going to happen last week. We were going to talk about it. You ready, Blake? Here we go. Well, yeah, was yeah. Per the, per the AV Club, the first signs of Sassy Justice, the movie, appeared in Wyoming last weekend when a curly-headed character with a striking resemblance to the president began appearing on local billboards and commercials. After hitting the internet, the short was revealed to be an elaborate demonstration of deep fake technology, with Trump and other social and political figures getting their mean mugs reshaped by the kind of technology that could one day doom us all. It's going to be before that anyways. Turned out to be a work of South Park's Trey Parker and Matt Stone, who developed the 15-minute clip with actor Peter Serafonsov. Here, reprising his viral... Sarah pressure. Finowitz. Sarah Finowitz. <laughs> but drop a dollar. These guys are a-holes. <laughs> One question lingered, however. How did these guys get so good at deep fakes? Well, according to a new interview in the New York Times, they hired around 20 deep, quote, deep fake artists and technicians and started a studio, Deep Voodoo, with the intention of cre- uh, creating a feature film. COVID-19 struck. Fuck you, covid just a few days into filming, forcing the crew to reimagine Sassy Justice as a web series. Quote, it's probably the single most expensive YouTube video ever made, Parker said, saying they spent millions on it. Uh, described as being in spirit of the great dictator, dictator and Dave. Great film. 
The great Dictor. Dictor, yes. Uh, the fil- had it wrapped, Philman would have uh, found Fred Sassy being drawn into the president's administration. The story will unfold in some shape or form, be it in film or TV, as Parker and Stone sound positively smitten with the deep fake model. Quote, it really is is this new form of animation for people like us who like to construct things on a shot-by-shot level and have control over every single actor and voice. It's a perfect medium for us, he said. He and Stone compared the experience to the creation of The Spirit of Christmas, the uh, do-it-yourself short that set the stage for South Park. That was their, got them noticed. Um, Before, quote, before the big scary thing of Corona showed up, everyone was so afraid of deep deep fakes, said Stone. We just wanted to make fun of it because it makes it less scary. So there you go. Ah, so then make fun of Corona. Make fun of Corona. Make that less scary. No, you can't. So, Blake, what did you want to say about this? <laughs> I said it's pretty damn funny. Yeah. If you if you didn't know it was a deep fake spoof to begin with, you're like, what's this sassy justice? Okay, it is kind of a, uh, you know, you know it's a comedy kind of thing, but it you know, goes into the deep fakes. But I, I think the best part is is when uh, they do a deep, a deep fake interview regarding to regarding fake imitation voices. And the, and the person that they interview at the five minute 30 section is just pure Hobie. Uh, I think and I can... I, I'm surprised that I, I posted for this, you, for you guys to watch and you guys haven't seen it. No, I watched it. It was a couple of weeks yeah. ago, but yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that's why I had hilarious. it right here. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. Five uh, minute thirty section. The person they bring on and talk about fake voices. It's awesome. It's epic. Uh, did you put? <laughs> did you post this on our Facebook page? No, I didn't put it on the Facebook page. It was just on our messenger. Okay, I'll put it on. Our, I'll see if I can. It's it our up. personal messenger. Okay, I'll put it up on our Facebook thing. I thought we did. I didn't know for sure. I'll double check. Uh, let's see here. And I love that's. Uh, it's the South Park guys that are doing it. Yeah, yeah, sassy. Yeah, I'm, I'm down for it. Whatever, whatever it is, South Park guys are doing it. I don't care if they're behind coronavirus. I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> Have they done more South Park episodes since the Corona special? Oh, Jeff, I don't think so. Uh, Jim, okay. Yeah, yeah, they did one for the election, didn't they? Election. Or, or did they? No, I don't remember. I, well, I didn't see one last Wednesday. So okay, I was just wondering. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe they haven't. God, I don't even remember. My brain is shot. Uh, it's but, like every day just runs into each other, and you never can tell time anymore. Time. You call it time traffic. No way. Time. Coming this June to Fox. <laughs> we need Matthew McConaughey to narrate our time. Uh, let's but see. I just talk about time running together. I mean, we're having a wonderful spring right now. No. Oh. <laughs> Seventy <laughs> degree spring weather. Weather is fantastic. Yeah, it's awesome. Oh, shit, we're getting snow as we speak. It is 19 degrees outside. I'm jealous. Ah, Holy shit. It's going to be one degrees tomorrow It's mid-November, night. guys. Come on. The snow's coming here in Utah. God, I wish I had that. It keeps coming and coming and coming. Yeah, God's frozen ejaculate <laughs> falling all over the state. That's why we're the blessed state, Steve. <laughs> Wait, is that going to be the title be... now? God's frozen ejaculate? <laughs> At least your faces will be warm and protected now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That salty goodness. That governor making us put on a mask. <laughs> That's the real reason he had you put masks on. <laughs> uh, let's see here. For comic book movie, Free Guy with Ryan Reynolds and Death on the Nile, two of the last remaining high-profile 2020 movie holdouts have vacated their December release windows and now find themselves undated. Uh, maybe if they date each other then... yeah, I was going to say <laughs> they could date each other uh, Disney owned 20th Century has removed Sean Levy's uh, video game inspired action comedy and Kenneth Branagh's Branagh, Branagh uh, <laughs> Mortar on the Orient Express follow up from their scheduled spots uh, Free Guy was supposed to hit theaters December 11th while Death of the Nile was going to open on December 28th Death um, of the Nile? Damn. <laughs> on the Nile. That's a different I was Your days are numbered, River. <laughs> Global warming takes its toll. Uh, with coronavirus uh, cases continuing to surge in the U.S., 55% of theaters remain closed in vital markets such as New York and L.A. Probably more now. Uh, so Lots these, of vital. Uh, so these delays were probably inevitable. 
Uh, right now, the only major studio tentpole yet to budge is Wonder Woman 1984. But Warner Brothers is expected to announce that the sequel probably will move to 2021 or go to HBO Max. So um, some studios are really sticking to their guns when it comes to small scale releases. However, however, Universal's The Crudes call in a new age is expected to have a shortened theatrical window ahead of um, uh, the P- PVOD. I'm, I'm having a stroke over here. Uh, drop out Christmas. PVOD. <laughs> yes. Video on demand. Uh, damn, that's coming out at Christmas now? Uh, while horror comedy Freaky is still dated for November 13th, which looks hilarious. I want to see Freaky. Uh, then... <laughs> Wait, did you get your free ticket offer from Cinemark? Because I've been getting those all week, and I'm like, <laughs> nice try. You're not getting me to go to that place. Uh, so my kids are off tomorrow for Veterans Day, and at one point I did look online today like, well, maybe if I took a half day, we could rent out a movie theater for 50 bucks and maybe we could watch a movie, like oh, see yeah. a movie. But uh, tomorrow, I think they're $99. I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Well, it's uh, a holiday, so that's yeah, going to be more. That's why. Well, luckily, The Croods is going to be coming out. Ooh, another Nicolas Cage movie coming out in 2020. Stay <gasps> tuned, everybody. Oh. Uh, Screen Gems, uh, Monster Hunter, s- starring Mila. Uh, could still debut in the Asian markets before the end of the year. Uh, so there you go. We're never getting movie theaters back, are we? Ugh. It's sad. You can, you we'll, can still we'll go. We'll have to start Why? pirating our movies yeah. from China. Then the tables will have turned. <laughs> what were you you don't want Dave? pirated movies from China. I've seen those. They're really shitty. Ooh, we watched one of those last night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, did, did it have a guy's head in the bottom lower left hand corner no That's but it was obviously shot in movies the, i got to see <laughs> instead of credits it did have the conversation uh in the car with the pov shot of the the, the carpet of their car <laughs> but it was with an english <laughs> accent which was kind of weird so i'm thinking That's it was so pirated weird. from london or something it could be hong kong yeah <laughs> was it jerry seinfeld filming it no sorry uh, no. jim what were you going to say about the theaters uh, you can still go, Jason. They're, they're, it's not like they're closed. <laughs> there's still True. ones that are open. True. There's drive-ins. <laughs> the drive-ins I like. I, I think that's really yeah. cool. I love the drive-ins. Drive-ins had a good renaissance. I hope that that continues after all this. I think fuck it, drive-ins. They suck. What? What? The what? Fuck drive-ins. They suck. Why? Because they're not an enjoyable way to watch a movie. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, who says you go there to watch a movie? I usually take the women there. I mean, never mind. How many women do you take? <laughs> Six All or seven that. at a time. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, kids you are take? free. <laughs> That's called kidnapping, Blake. Uh, <laughs> no, not if you let them out of the trunk. Oh, okay. <laughs> After you get in. <laughs> hey, Jeff, I will. I, I agree with you on the one point. It was a pretty miserable experience last time I went to the drive-in. Of course, we also saw the Lion King live action, so that could be the reason. That could be the reason. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's it's a novelty. Problem. Yeah. It's uh, a novelty thing. I, I do think drive-ins will stay around for a little bit longer, um, especially depending on how long this goes. Um, so I was actually hoping Freaky would just go straight to video on demand because I wanted to see that. Uh, Vince well, it, it, it'll be like two or three weeks probably. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> uh, Blake, uh, my search to watch Fantasy Island, the, re- the movie, it continues. It's still $12 to buy online now. Wait until it's free. Kate. That's what I'm waiting. I'm waiting for at least two dollars. I would do two dollars. I'm I'm surprised they're still trying to charge people for it. <laughs> uh, let's see here, uh, real quick. Uh, hopefully, next September, uh, we will be at the Cincinnati Comic Expo at the Duke Energy Convention Center in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, hopefully, it's on a medical ward. And yeah, uh, hopefully, uh, we'll be running the the stage down there. So. Uh, get your tickets maybe next year uh, at the CincinnatiComicExpo.com. Go to their website. They'll get you some. Uh, they'll be updating it uh, throughout the time. Um, so hopefully we have some news. You know, if this starts turning the corner in six months, uh, we'll be able to do an expo again. So yeah, And if for some cool. reason that expo is canceled, meet us at Thunderdome for the history of bad expos. Oh, I like it. We, we were talking about you doing it a virtual cool. con. Think about it. Um, you know what? If though? we lived in New Zealand, we could have this. Con- 
convention. Yeah, Nikki on Twitter uh, was. <laughs> well, uh, if we were on our own island, <laughs> if we lived in New Zealand or Mars, we could have this convention. Ooh, we could have the convention on the moon. Ooh, we could have. No, a we can't. There's no oxygen on the moon. <laughs> Uh, New Zealand, Nick, Nikki was posted in New Zealand, had their first gaming convention since Corona, and uh, you didn't have to wear masks because they got rid of it. So. Because they can follow they're, simple they're, instructions. Yes. They're, they're, they might they be can follow simple instructions like sheep. What do you say, Jeff? Yeah. What do you say, Jim? Jeff, there might be oxygen on the moon. China <laughs> has, grown, has, has grown a live plant on the moon this week. Has China ever been on the surface of the moon? Yeah, they, they're... <laughs> yeah, I think they you have there last year, the year before. Yeah. Not man, but, like, ships. Like, no, they're colonizing they, the moon, people. They did a lunar lander, didn't they? Wake up, sheeple. Yeah. <laughs> and, they've, so, and they've grown and they've grown a plant on the so moon. So is that plant giving enough oxygen for... Uh, <laughs> to sustain human life yet? <laughs> How weed is it? Hope, we're, we're hoping it will by September so we can have the Comic-Con there. <laughs> and unfortunately, it was a Venus flytrap plant, and so there's no flies around, so it's already dead. It has no food. It died. Oh, no. no! If they're smart, they plant bamboo because that grows like sh- crazy. Oh. Or maybe they'll put kudzu up there. The moon would yeah. be covered in a year. <laughs> and it, here's what happens. They plant bamboo up there, then it becomes an apex predator. Don't you guys watch movies? <laughs> Science. Bamboo, I mean, technically, the bamboo would be predator. an apex predator on the moon. <laughs> What's the competition? I'm just surprised they found a part of the moon they could plant something that wasn't cheese. <laughs> right? Well, that's where they get the rich nutrients. Well, I know it was full of mold and mildew up there, but come on. Uh, so it's blue cheese? Oh, I thought it was yeah. good cheese. Filled, <laughs> I know, it, it, it's usually white cheese, but it's blue every once in a while. <laughs> Filled blue with mold cheese. and mil- mildew. you talking about Toledo, <laughs> Ohio? Standing alone. Speaking of Toledo, we'll have Jeannie from uh, Hobie on next week. Just let everybody know. So there you go. <clears throat> All right. Uh, oh, good. Uh, finally, a decent guest. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Uh, Jeff, hit me with some box yes. office news and world reports, buddy. Hit it. All right. Well, the box office news this week. Number one coming in the box office is Let Him Go. Let Him Go. Made $4.1 million in its opening weekend on its $21 million budget. Oh. Yeah. Anyone go see it? Never even heard of it. <laughs> is it a se- Frozen sequel? It's, uh, I Kevin, assume so. Kevin, no, Kevin Costner's, uh, his son dies, I think, and he's going after his yeah. grandkid. Um, he's trying to find his grandkid. Oh, that's right. It's got Diane Lane in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I thought he was, I'm in. I thought he was going to hunt his grandkid. He's like, yeah. he's going after his grandkid. Jesus. He got his son. Now he's going for the next generation. He Kevin Costner to- in. Let him go. Dot, dot, dot. So I can hunt him. <laughs> I w- Ending his own bloodline. That's right. I would, I would let cottage cheese off Diane Lane's feet. Anyways, moving on. Ooh. And you hate feet. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, excuse you me, Jonathan, I have to go too, stop the cats you? from uh, taking off in their tiny helicopter. <laughs> I, li- I like uh, large curd che- cottage cheese, not small curd. Small curd is nasty. <laughs> yeah, don't come around that small <laughs> yeah, curd. Yeah, small curd is nasty, unlike Diane Lane's sweet, supple feet. Mm. Mm. Right. Anyway, have- number two, <laughs> the Come Play made $1.7 million, a total of $5.6 million on a $9 million budget. Almost getting the money back. Where Kevin Costner goes after his granddaughter. <laughs> Come play. <laughs> oh, I wonder what Kevin Costner does in our number three movie, <laughs> The War with Grandpa, which made one point five million, a total of thirteen and a half million, on a twenty four million dollar budget. Uh, obviously, he's the grandpa, but in this one, it's from the perspective of the grandchildren. Ah, excellent. Well, then, so Honest actually- Thief. 
Oh, go ahead. That, that, I was going to say, that's the future of movies right there. You film like three different movies like on the same movie. You just change the perspective. Yeah, hey, you just have <laughs> GoPros everywhere. And yeah. then it's like, oh, my God, vantage point. <laughs> but good. You have the first person. You have the, 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 the other first person, the other side of it. And then <laughs> like the God perspective, the narrative. <laughs> Narrated by Morgan Freeman. <laughs> With my luck, my life would be narrated by Gilbert Gottfried. <laughs> and then he licked cottage cheese off of some fate. <laughs> okay, that's Jason's life. <laughs> I'd like to see Mr. Bean do it for you, Jeff. Okay. And Teller can do yours. Awesome. Burn. Anyway... Number four this week, Honest Thief made one point one million, a total of eleven million on a seventeen million dollar budget. And the movie we were all waiting for at number five, Tenet made nine hundred and five thousand dollars, a total of fifty five million domestically, on Still a two hundred million dollar budget. No, I was expecting a billion dollars. <laughs> oh, I'm so sad. Like worldwide, they still got over three hundred million. Three hundred and fifty million. Yeah, they're fine, guys. But I wanted to make it a sequel. <laughs> uh, upcoming, November 13th of 2020, we have Dreamland. Hit it, Jimmy. A teenager's adventure as a bounty hunter takes an unexpected twist. Oh, fuck. Is this like Domino? Oh, God, it's the sequel to Domino. Speaking of the shitty movie we just watched a pirated <laughs> version of... <laughs> God damn, I forgot how much I hate that movie. Every Steve, fucking frame. She's not like the other girls. Uh, the is wrong that... Scott died. <laughs> <laughs> and here I thought this was going to be a re- uh, a uh, video game adaptation of Kirby or something. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah. That would be fun. That'd be all right. uh, also coming out, we have Jason's favorite, Freaky. I want to see this. Vince Vaughn exchanges bodies with his son. Hey, 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 cut it down. This is Jim's thing. Cut it down. After bodies with a deranged serial killer, a young girl in high school discovers that she has less than 24 hours before the change becomes permanent. Oh. Oh, so it is a body swapping movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, shit. It was Freaky Friday. Yeah, it is. Freaky (laughs) Friday the 13th. Was that taken, I assume? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, also coming up, we've got uh, The Climb, which I'm assuming is an adaptation of the uh, did Trisha Yearwood sing that song or something. What? It's a sequel to Over the Hedge. It's a sequel <laughs> to Cliffhanger. <laughs> Everest. Uh, the Climb. Look at the relationship between two guys that spans over many years. Yeah, this one looks... Oh, uh, what? And the sweet Sorry. sensual butt sex they have. But it does have George Wendt in it. Oh, I mean. Well, that must be one of the best movies of the year, then. <laughs> that sounds awful. All right. The next one, I'm going to sound like Jason here, because I have no fucking clue how to pronounce Ammonite. 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 1840s England. Acclaimed but overlooked fossil hunter Mary Anning and a young woman sent to convalesce by the sea develop an intense relationship, altering both of their lives forever. Oh, <laughs> you it's dinosaur it's, hunter! It's mm. literally a fossilized version of beaches. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm thinking more of Brokeback Mountain, but with 1840s England and fossil hunting. So I'm in. I mean, uh, I'm literally re- doing an Ammonite right now. It's true. Starring I Rosamund did. Pike and Emma, uh, fuck was, Emily Blunt. Wow, this is Kate Winslet. I did read they were going to be doing a. Go ahead, Jim. I said this stars Kate Winslet and Cersei Ronan. I'm still in. Still in. So did, did anyone else hear about uh, a uh, female adaptation of Brokeback Mountain? It's fake. Yeah. <laughs> it was a great meme, though. Yeah. Uh, what else we got? Uh, Echo Boomers. Echo! Okay, Boomer. Ah. Echo Boomers, based on a true story... Five college graduates decide the best way to get back at the unfair economy and live the life they've always wanted is to steal from Chicago's richest 
and give to themselves. I was going to guess sell drugs. <laughs> wow. Based on a true story, there once was five graduates. <laughs> they stole something. Once five guys there graduated. once was five graduates who decided, shit, we need to make some money. How are we going to do it? I don't know. Steal it. There we go. So it's the sequel to Wolf of Wall Street. Then they wrote a movie about it. <laughs> uh, what else? Leslie Ann Warren, Michael Shannon, Alex Pettiford. Um, who else is in this? <laughs> Michael Shannon. I wonder if he's a cop. Did you say <laughs> Leslie Ann Warren? Yeah. Leslie Ann Warren, yes. Oh, all right. I think she's like the uh, uh, voiceover. <laughs> oh, okay. She's telling the story. She's the college president. This is a comedy, uh, right? It's called hey. the Dean. And we've got Chick Fight. <laughs> Chick Fight. What the heck is I'm in. <laughs> when Anna Y. Lincoln is introduced to an underground all-female fight club in order to turn the mess of her life around, she di- discovers she is much more personally connected to the history of the club than she could ever imagine. Don't talk about I chick am fight. In. Don't talk about chick fight. Oh. Chick fight club. Damn, I thought an it was all gonna be... female fight club. Jeez, would they quit with these all-female remakes? <clears throat> It's the sequel to Cockfight Club. Damn, I thought it was going to be uh, the movie adaptation of Oz with an all baby chick uh, yeah. cast. <laughs> I would so watch that. <laughs> they can still be voiced by like J.K. Simmons oh, and Ada yeah, yeah. and all those guys. Absolutely. But it's going to be baby chicks. Ernie Hudson. <laughs> yeah, it's not a complete rip off or steal. Instead of making soap, you know, they, their main characters actually make candles. <laughs> I am in chick fight. I, I honestly thought you were going to say they made douche or something. Yeah. <laughs> they, they made Cherokee hair tampons. Uh, Send your complaints to Blake at graphicnovice.com. I, I didn't Jason, come up with that bad one. <laughs> this movie does have Kevin Nash in it for you. Oh, okay. Diesel. He blows out both his quads, though, in the I, opening credits, Jim. Do all they do is tear no, no, each other's Alec hair Baldwin out? Does that. What'd you say, Jim? Alec Baldwin does that in this movie. <laughs> Jeff, give me some top five music. Dun, 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 dun. Top five. Top five this week. Well, it doesn't matter what side of the election you're on. The side of the parties you're on, or if you're in the middle and you just fucking hate everybody. Uh, top five this week, we needed some comfort films. These may not be the best films, but it's from the 1990s. Films from the 1990s that are your comfort films. Basically, you love to rewatch. They just kind of get you in a good mood. Um, and just, you know, kind of your own interpretation. It may not be the best of the 90s, but it's what you like. So, Steve, Izzy. You guys can go first. What is your number five? Izzy, do you have a list? I do. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Am I, wait, uh, so am I doing... Number five. I'm just doing number five? Yes. And then, yeah. Alrighty. Um, I know all of the sequels are absolute dumpster fires and are trash, but I really, really like Men in Black, the original. Oh, okay. That's we a good one. Oh, the Men in Black. <sighs> Although Men in Black 2 is better. Why is Men in Black 2 better, Jeff? Because Rosario Mm. Dawson is in it. You would lick cottage Mm. cheese off her feet. Mm. (laughs) Rosario Dawson. Small and big curd. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Steve, what's your number five? Uh, My number five, um, I, I can guarantee you this is not on anybody else's top five anything Unless it's Norm Macdonald movies, because my number five is Dirty Work, starring Dirty Norm Works. Macdonald and Artie Lang. That was an honorable mention for me, because I love that movie. That is a hilarious I movie. I also fucking love that movie. It, directed by uh, Bob Saget, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. It looks like you got hookers in the car. <laughs> Dead hookers in the yeah. car, in the trunk. It's, free, it, it, it's like an 80-minute movie, and yep. every time I watch it, I just fucking laugh the entire yeah. time. Even Chip Chase comes on is funny. Jack Warden, like... Yeah, we didn't check. have we didn't have that fancy birth control when we were kids. <laughs> like pull it out. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it when you owe a bookie twenty thousand dollars and he says shoots one of your toes off, you still owe him the twenty thousand dollars? It doesn't seem fair. <laughs> I do like how Don Rickles just makes fun of Artie Lang in it. <laughs> 
Look at oh, this baby and girl. Actually, off. I just realized it has a tie into Men in Black. Yeah. Because the movie they show in the theater is Men in Black. <gasps> who oh. like to have sex with each other. <laughs> uh, Jeff, what's your number five? That's a good one, Steve. I like that movie. Uh, my number five is That Thing You Do. That Thing. That Thing You Do. Good, good love the Beatles. Good do wop movie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I didn't see that for the first uh, That was the, the first time I saw that was like maybe two years ago. And uh, my oh, wife wow. and I watched it. It was, a, it was enjoyable. It was enjoyable. I like that one. That's one that, yeah, I'll, whenever it's on, you know, it, it, it shawshanks me. I'll watch that all the way through to the end again. Uh, Jim, what's your number five? My number five, it's the feel-good movie of the 1990s. I'll go with American History X. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I'm like, I like your comfort movies, Jim. <laughs> so, I'm just kidding. It's Unnecessary Roughness with Scott Bakula. <laughs> uh, that's from the 80s, though, isn't it? 1991. Ooh, wow. Shit. Okay. Uh, hey, Jeff. Jim. Ireland. Jim, this is my throwing hand. <laughs> Boom. Uh, Blake, what's your number five? Uh, my number five, when I first saw it, I didn't like it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, parents bought me the DVD and sent it to me overseas. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. But over the years, I've actually grown to like it. Uh, <laughs> and I'll watch it now when I get stuck on it. It's uh, Forrest Gump, 1994. Ugh. Good soundtrack. Oh, oh. Girl, I, I like Forrest Gump. I'm one of those guys. Mm. Yeah, you are. Well, <laughs> uh, my number. Five. I mean, that's where I get all my shrimp recipes from. Ooh, <laughs> uh, small uh, shrimp, uh, large shrimp, Creole shrimp. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. After living in Detroit for a year, you're pronouncing it incorrectly. It is pronounced scrimps. Ooh, scrimps. Scrimp. <laughs> scrimps. We're pronouncing it like. Bubba Blue, not Detroit people. Damn Detroit people. Well, uh, I just want you guys to know how it is supposed to be pronounced. <laughs> Better suck in that lid. Get a call on a tripwire. Uh, let's see. My, <laughs> my number my number. I mean, it five. is a great quotable movie, too. I mean, come on. <laughs> Fucking Forrest Gump. Uh, Ice cream. <laughs> Ice cream. <laughs> you ain't got no legs. I got no legs. <laughs> Uh, number five for me is, uh, I'll go with that one. Yeah. Is, uh, it's not a very feel good movie, but it is a comfort film for me because I really love it. The Crow. Love The Crow. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, but, right. yeah. I, 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 I love The Crow too, but it's not like a comfort feel good movie. It feels good for me because he gets revenge on everybody. And then he well, finds yeah, it. And, and it reminds okay. Jason Re- that it can't rain all the time. It can't rain all the time. Great soundtrack. Yep. Uh, when he's putting on the paint at the end in the mirror, when he's about ready to go out to do his deeds, and that music hits, uh, I think it's The Cure, actually. Um, yeah, it's The Cure. When he, they're doing, oh, my God, I love it. It makes me feel like, damn, go get him. Go get him. You're, you're ready to good. go kick some ass. And yeah. Do some revenge so you can feel good. Yeah. So uh, that's my number five. Um, I, I would have put, put it on uh, my list, but just, these are supposed to be feel good. And I was kind of like more of a revenge kind of thing. And then you're sad at the end. So, but it's okay. Uh, my number four. But, is, but, but, but the crow comes out in the wrestling ring in, in WCW. So uh, that was cool. <laughs> well, and then you've got all those fabulous sequels. Oh God. All those sequels that we now own. Oh yes, God. We got the four pack of crow sequels. We do not, <laughs> talk Steve, about, we do not acknowledge oh. them. We do not acknowledge those, Steve. Like the Highlander sequels. We do not acknowledge <laughs> those either. Everybody knows the second one's the best, Blake. Uh, <laughs> Shut up. Uh, my number four is something I really have started to watch a lot lately. It makes me feel good. My cousin Vinny, uh, with I, I don't know why, with the, like with the Ute, the Ute it's Marissa Tomei. Yeah, I know why. It's Marissa Tomei, sweet That's right. Ass. Like, and he's thinking Academy about award he's thinking winning about Big Curd. She looks spectacular in that movie. She does today, yeah. thirty years later. Right? Jason's yeah. just a Ralph Macchio. Man, I think. It's, it's a, a good sexy film. accent. He yeah. just can't help himself. Oh, God, I'm wet. <laughs> you know, the it's Ralph Macchio's wax on Fuck Off. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh God. So that's my that's number four. Blake, what's yours? Number four. Uh, my number four. I, I always will stop and watch it. It makes me go to my happy place. Happy Gilmore. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> that's literally make you go to your happy place. Literally you know? make me go to the happy place, and it's probably one of the reasons why I watch Modern Family. <laughs> it's amazing. She does not look the same in that. She doesn't. Look- uh, just That's different hair. Twenty five years later, I mean, yeah, she still she looks, looks pretty good. Like an older version of the yeah. same lady to me. I mean, but uh, by like Jason a... standards, I would yeah. still do curds. <laughs> <laughs> she looked great, and uh, she, uh, she'd be Halloween. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, I'm not saying she looks bad out. at all. I just feel like it looks. She looks totally different, and I don't know why. Maybe it is the hair. So uh, no, no, she the hair looks different. Same as she'd be Halloween. <laughs> Jim, what's your number four? My number four, I believe I'm probably going to take some people's number ones with this one. Possibly. There's everybody has to watch this side out. What a fantastic <laughs> movie that was. Mm. Is that the volleyball <laughs> movie? <laughs> the volleyball. Mm. That was 1990. <laughs> oh, oh really? Thomas Howe oh. and, uh, uh, oh, I forgot his name from 30-something. Peter Horton? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. that one guy. Yeah, but but that came in a 1980s heartthrob video pack that we have. Are you <laughs> sure that was 1990? It was 1990 was the release date. Wow, it was probably filmed in the 80s, but released in the. <laughs> I 90s. say it looks like it was filmed in 84. But, <laughs> but I, I mean, he's right. It's a feel good movie. Their love cannot be tamed. That's right. Uh, Jeff, what's your number four? Uh, my number four is probably the best sports movie from the uh, mm-hmm. uh, 90s. Basketball. Mis- Mystery Alaska. Oh, oh I okay. forgot about that movie. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> I had a different sports one on there. Damn it. Go ahead. That's a good one. Uh, the best sports movie was Side Out, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I lumped that in the 80s. Sorry, Jim. Oh man! I think uh, I, I just lumped everything C. Thomas Howe did was an '80s movie. <laughs> uh, Steve, what's your number four? Well, my number four it may be higher on other people's list, but uh, Jurassic Park. I mean, it's <sighs> okay. it's an incredible movie, and it has dinosaurs and Deal. carnage. Well, and, and it's a totally gets... female empowerment movie. You yep, know who wins totally that fucking movie? It. The T Rex, and guess what? She's a fucking girl. That's who I want to be when I grow up. A T Rex. <laughs> I want to be a T Rex. <laughs> uh, that was on the not other the night. glam rock group. No, not that. Uh, that that was an <laughs> honorable mention. Bang a gun. That was an honorable mention for me, Steve. Good job. Good job. Uh, what's your number four, Izzy? Well, this may not be a feel-good movie for many people, but there are some days where I'm just angry and I want to burn the world down. Mm-hmm. And uh, it makes me feel good to watch a movie where, spoiler alert, just everyone dies. Event Horizon. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I fucking love that movie. Sometimes I just want to watch everyone die, and it makes me feel better. <laughs> oh, Hellraiser in space, people. <laughs> Love it. We're not talking says. about this anymore. No, because every time you come on, you talk about this freaking movie. No, we're done. You can't. <laughs> but it has the greatest light in all of cinema. We're leaving. It's been a long time since I smelled beautiful. It's <laughs> 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 the first so time I got crabs. <laughs> uh, Izzy, what's your number three? We're not doing. We're not entertaining your event horizon crap. <laughs> Only because it's the greatest movie ever Steve, made. I get Paul it. Paul W.S. Anderson, please get, get us back to I us get it. They're just trying to silence the female voice on their podcast. I get it. No, I just put I Steve kind of on probation. Have you never listened to this podcast <laughs> <Right>? before? <laughs> um, alrighty. Uh, let's see. My number three. Uh, again, I love horror movies. A movie Steve will confirm I fucking love and puts me in a good mood every time. Tremors. Oh, oh, love Tremors. Did you see the new one? I yeah. did, and I will say it was better than uh, Cold Day in Hell. Cold Day in Hell. Yeah, it was actually pretty good. I really liked it. 
I did a review on nerdly.co.uk. I really enjoyed it. I really, yeah. I thought it was well done. I, I was surprised. So, Trevor's Where's in your Tremors hierarchy. Is it like second or two. third best? Two. Second best, Number yeah. Nice. Wait, wait, wait. You think it's better than uh, Beginnings? Oh, the Western one? No. Yeah? <laughs> F that movie. No, I can't. But that's but that's the only one with the sand dragons in it. No, no, I can't. That that one was awful. <laughs> I don't even know if I finished that one. God. By the way, am I the only one who just wanted some sort of like little mini cameo where uh, Bert gets a call from Reba asking about like where she when he's going to pay her alimony? <laughs> <laughs> I was I was actually hoping for a Kevin Bacon quick intro, like a quick one, like something. I was Wait. hoping. I we all cool. hope for a Kevin Bacon quickie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but do you like your Kevin Bacon limp or limp hard? Limp hard. <laughs> Not every movie can be, is it Wild Things? Where oh, you know, yeah. 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 And we said limp or hard, things, not sometimes sour. Sometimes it's Hollow Man, but either way, you're going to get it. <laughs> you're going to get that Kevin Bacon dog. Oh, Hollow Man. Limp Bacon. Uh, and Izzy, we do not try to silence the female voice. Because of that, Steve is on probation right now because he keeps talking about her Event Horizon. So see, see, we're putting him on probation, <laughs> not you. <laughs> Steve, you better make number three quick. And that's what she said. So let's go. What's right. your number three? Well... <laughs> Well, if I can't say Event Horizon, no. Uh, <laughs> my my number three, I actually just had to cross off Face Off because I forgot a movie. Uh, basketball, because I fucking love basketball. He with does. All of my heart. He does. Okay. It is the best of both worlds. It's Matt Parker and Trey. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, Trey Parker and Matt Stone and the Zucker Abrams conglomerate that made all the Naked Gun movies and Airplane and all that coming together to just make Steve's day talking about sports. When Steve got out of major surgery, he asked for two things, Cheez-Its and basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Such a terrible thing to happen on Dozen Egg Night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I like what was it there? 200 no clue where this guy is. What was it there? 200 team tournament or whatever they had. <laughs> They were trying yeah. to figure out the bracket. <laughs> we are now in month eight of the playoffs. <laughs> and if no clear winners determined, the three-legged sack race will be held on consecutive Sundays until a champion is crowned. <laughs> uh, Jeff, what's your number three? Uh, my number three, uh, I'm not even supposed to be here today. Clark. Oh, Clark. Good one. Good one. Best black and white movie of, no, anyway. of mm-hmm. 1994. Three, mm-hmm. 1993. I was going to say, Schindler's <laughs> List might have something to say about that. <laughs> yeah, it's better than Schindler's List, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, more topical, too. Uh, <laughs> more uh, Number two, three for you, Jim. Uh, I'll give a quote to this, see if anybody can guess it. The quote is, they're going to send me back to Omaha, and I don't even live there. What is that? Uh, is that Major League? Major League Close. 2? Major League 2. <laughs> yeah, it was, it's one of those. I was trying to like, wait, or is that like Back to the Majors, number 3? Oh. <laughs> Major League 2, Rube, little Rube Baker. <laughs> what a great character. <laughs> Major League was almost on my list, but it was 1989. It just missed yeah. it yeah. Damn. There are a lot of movies that I, on. I, yeah. I can't turn it off. <laughs> it's not good, Jim. It's not good. It there, there were a lot of movies that I went with right off the bat, and then I looked, and they're like 87, 80, 89. 80. I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit. It was major I, will, li- I will say Rube Baker and uh, Tanaka, they were good uh, ads to the the story. And it has the Allstate guy in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it has the 15 minutes uh, say 15% or whatever it is. You're in good I'm like, hands. Seriously, if I was if I was somewhere and Dennis Haysbert was there, I wouldn't be talking about his insurance commercials. I would be, be saying, going, fuck, fuck you, Joe Boo. Boo. I do it myself. <laughs> I, do it myself. I, I would be talking about the Dark Tower and you know it. <laughs> <laughs> Jim's favorite nope. movie of the last two years. Oh. Uh, so, right now. <laughs> uh, Blake, what's your number three? I got three for three because why not? And it's okay. my list. <laughs> it's, uh, so I 
first first of my three are actually a pair that go together. It's uh, my old fan, my old buddy Witt Stillman in uh, Metropolitan in Barcelona, which I talked about before a long time ago. But and then also, also Office Space. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Office Space I had as an honorable mention. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Which, by the way, you can get uh, Metropolitan on uh, Showtime and uh, Epics right now if you wanted to. Is it one of those French New Wave films? Because I love those films with Jeff, Scab Jeff. No, it's more about <laughs> relationships and conversation. Oh, I'm bored by that. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> Not for everybody. <laughs> Speaking of that, wrestling, mm-hmm. no. Uh <laughs> Uh, my number three is one that I did not like the first time I saw it, and now I love it. Uh, the Truman Show with Jim Carrey. Really love The Truman Show. That's a great one. Yeah. I like it. Good choice. Uh, number two. Uh, I, what's that? Wait, I just saw a tweet by Jim Carrey. I don't know how old it is. It was shared by somebody, but it was like, man, this is weird. I make a comment, uh, and then the next thing I know, all my ads on Facebook and, and Instagram – are all talking about the thing I the, the thing I just talked about, man. It's like I'm in a movie, the Truman Show. <laughs> when his wife is holding up the uh, the the products to sell, <laughs> why are you doing that? <laughs> why are you saying it like that? <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Uh, my number two is um, I don't want your life. Varsity Blues. Uh, Steve, you are on double secret probation. You better well, shut your horn. Well, no, here, 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 here's the thing about Varsity Blues, guys. It. I'm going to blow your mind. I've never seen it, and I don't care. Izzy, <laughs> slap him. Slap him. Just slap him. <laughs> um, the pig's name, name is Bacon. Bacon. Yes. <laughs> Oh my god! I've seen I love the better Varsity version Blues. of Varsity Blues. It's called Not Another Teen Movie. Great film. <laughs> it's a great film. Well, yeah, so. that one has. Has Chris, uh, Chris Evans, yeah. Chris Evans whipped yeah. mm. <laughs> whip the. Wh- I'll lick the whipped cream off his toes. Uh, Blake, what's your number two? It is America's ass. Uh, number two, I always stop and watch it, and always has a great soundtrack as well. Uh, also, a lot of uh, the actors that I learned to come and love and watch them in, whether in big productions or. Small independence. Uh, Days and confused. confused. Ah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> it's not true. Starring Mia Jovovich. Woo! <laughs> Correct. Yes, yeah, she is the main star. <laughs> Jim, what's your number two? Uh, my number two. It's the proper time of year to watch it. Nightmare Before Christmas. Ah. Excellent choice. Nice choice. That's a good one. Jeff, what's your number two? You're making me deep. I'm still reflecting on Jim's number two because it was a good choice. It didn't make my uh, my my list, but I, I thought about it. Uh, but my number two is uh, Tommy Boy. Ah. Yeah. Uh, that one makes me laugh probably more than any other film from the – 90s. You're kind of like a fat man. Your head's a thick candy shell. Shut up. <laughs> I will say the one that makes me laugh out loud, the part of that is the deer coming back to life and destroying. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. Um, if nope, burning out all, all fragments out. and setting things on fire. <laughs> Where were you going to say, Jim? You gotta guess. They're all out. Only hit diesel. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do? Richard. Uh, number two for you, Steve. You must be playing for the Oh, Yankees. for me, uh, it's another movie that I'm pretty sure is on nobody's top five list of anything. <laughs> But it is from the Michael Crichton universe. It is Congo. Yes. <laughs> Laura, Linney, Hudson, Laura Linney, Tim Carey, Delroy Lindo, and many, many more. It's about a talking ape that goes to Africa with the help of a Romanian philanthropist and a woman who's apparently a doctor, a former CIA agent, and the, I don't know, veep of a telecommunications <laughs> network. Don't worry about it. And the they're Congo. trying to heist diamonds. Yes, diamonds. Well, time out. That doesn't need to make sense. Killer apes. Time out. 
Jeff? Jeff? Ugly gorilla. Do it. Do it. Do the sign language. Ugly gorilla. Okay, what's the Ugly other one? Uh, beautiful oh. aim eating my sesame cake. <laughs> All I know is it does the same hand motion for whatever the monkey is saying. Or I'm sorry. Raindrop drink. The chimpanzee is saying. Raindrop drink. <laughs> And, and it's still the same hand line motion as whatever it's trying to say. Tim Curry. Tony Hudson's finest performance. The great white hunter, only he happens to be black. Yes. <laughs> uh, what, do you, what, what should we do about them? Put them on the endangered species list. <laughs> yeah. Well, read... Did we turn into NCIS uh, uh, Miami? That's yeah. CSI, I'm sorry. CSI Miami. Yeah. And we didn't even mention oh. Bruce Campbell. Right? Oh, God, he was in that. Yes. <laughs> or Joe Don Baker. Yeah. Or uh, Mary Ellen Trainer. Joe Don Baker. She's in it for a scene. <laughs> Joe Don Baker was the the head of the telecommunications, wasn't he? The, the company? Yeah. Yep. Give me back my diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> you guys tell me a better movie with a laser monkey fight. <laughs> that is true. Is he actually number two? <laughs> My number two just squeaked into the 90s, just barely squeaked in there. Steve's going to be mad it's not on his list. But it's a movie. It has romance. It has amnesia. It has space travel. It has his favorite (laughs) quote, possibly. Get your ass to Mars. (laughs) God damn it. Total recall. (laughs) It's oh, just because of this. Why did you pull both of our headphones out? <laughs> it's because of the three boobed lady. That's all it is. <laughs> it's fine, Izzy. It's fine. That's it. Guys, guys, those exploding heads. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you you watch those scenes and not and not just be in a great mood. I <laughs> I have many times. <laughs> the girl with three boobs. I mean, come on. <laughs> you only have two Sharon Stone, hand. right hand. Sharon hey. Stone. Yeah. Sharon Stone. And then uh, Sharon Stone getting shot oh, in the head. Spoiler. Okay. And then, uh, out. <laughs> and she, she does kick some ass. Yeah, right. <laughs> if, to, if Total Recall is number two, what is your number one? <laughs> well, it dropped off of Steve's list. Thank God. I named my like heart cat who passed away after this movie. Again, it's got romance, it's got action, it's got flaming doves. Face off. My number it's got one. Waterfalls. It's got Nick Cage. Oh my god, it's so good. Put it on the <laughs> board. It's one third. Izzy, it's one third of my number one. No. Oh, oh god. <laughs> So we'll skip over over. Jason's number one. He's going to hobie the shit out of number ones. uh, I don't think you lied about your. I did. Because you left one very important movie off. I did leave Hocus Pocus off. Oh, okay. Okay. I did. It's in my also rounds. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Okay. I swear that was a top five though. Steve, (laughs) Steve, you beautiful, beautiful whore. You better not disappoint me on your number one. Come on. (laughs) Come on. I won't. I won't. Uh, because I also hobied the shit out of this one. No, it's not the Nicolas Cage trifecta, but what? it's it's not. I know, I know, because this pair of movies, anytime I'm feeling bad, all I need to do is watch them, and they always make me happy. It's Adam's Family and Adam's Family Values. God damn it, I Woo! love those movies. You know what? They, I think Jeff and I agree that they have too much Uncle Fester in it. Is that who it was? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, fuck you guys. Those movies are perfect. <laughs> yeah. uh, Chris, Chris Floyd was a terrible choice for Fester. Fuck you guys. And, and are the fact that they made Fester Gomez's brother, not Morticia's uncle, crime. Nope. Fuck you guys. That well, okay? Yeah. So it doesn't meet with the I don't know the the television cinematic universe <laughs> or whatever, but or uh, the comic strip it's based off of, or any other thing that came before it. But yeah, okay. It, have you guys seen the Adams Family that came out last year with yes. uh, Oscar Isaac and all that? I have not. No. Yeah, it doesn't compare because you don't need to watch it because you have these two movies from the '90s: Adams Family and Adams Family Values. Fuck I, Oscar Isaac. Are, bio Candidos, Raul Julia. Oscar Isaac sucks. There, I said it. I did. You love- told me to fuck him, then you told me he sucks. I should meet this guy. <laughs> Well, I did like the when I did like Wednesday going to the day camp and t- or to the camp and taking it over with the uh, Thanksgiving meal. That was hilarious. <laughs> yes. Oh, Christina Ricci was great. 
Yeah. And Joan Cusack was amazing in the sequel. Oh, <laughs> uh, Jeff, what's your number? The ballerina, graceful, delicate. <laughs> they had to go. <laughs> Jeff, what's your number one? My number one, damn the man, save the empire. Good call. Empire Good. Records. Good call. <laughs> Okay, shock man. me, shock me, shock me. With that it's Rex Manning day. day. <laughs> <laughs> Say no. Another great, oh, another great soundtrack. Yeah, it is a great soundtrack. Uh, Jimmy, what's your number one? Uh, Highlander 2. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no. <laughs> okay, you started your list with a lie, so you're finishing your list with a lie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my number one, it's a, I told me this with two movies that are always on and I can never turn them off and they feel good. Shawshank Redemption and Tombstone. You know what? <laughs> yep. Yep. Those were my feel honorable good mentions. Movie, though? Shawshank Redemption makes you feel good. Likes the butt Did you watch the end? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I watched it for the first time just a couple of months ago. <laughs> Thanks, COVID. <laughs> it, it, you know what? It's a good movie. Uh, it's it's worth the hype, everybody. I know I'm like 25 years behind everybody else. Honestly, but. that's a surprise. It's somebody who hasn't seen it, but you probably hear everyone talk about it being great because nothing lives up to the hype. The fact that you think it even comes close to living up to the hype is Shawshank, says something. Shawshank is my most perfect movie. Uh, it's not a feel-good movie. It was on my honorable mentions along with Tombstone because that's another perfect movie. Good job, Jim. I am proud of you for those. They they were almost uh, on my list. Tombstone but. is near perfect. Doc Holliday. They, they, they get a little too much with the yeah, uh, no the, 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 the Delaney love they story. I could see that. They needed to cut that down. Yeah, all that horse riding stuff with her. Boring. Uh, <laughs> and I mean... Jason Priestley could have been cut from the movie completely. Oh, poor Jason Priestley. But not Billy Zane. You double down on Billy Zane. Oh, That's of right. course. <laughs> Is Jason Priestley dead? No. No, he was in the car no, accident. Luke Perry. Luke, Luke Perry's Perry. dead, but yeah. Okay, Jason Priestley was in that car accident. The race car accident. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I digress. Uh, Blake, what's your number one? Uh, the number one, of course, man. Is my number one... Brings my entire top five list together. Okay. It's the dude. Oh, Lebowski. The big Lebowski. <laughs> ties, ties the room together. Yeah. I'm surprised that was all on your list. Yeah, uh, Dirty Work beat it out. Yeah. <laughs> true, you do watch Dirty Work more. <laughs> it's true. I'll suck your dick for 50000 Do you take checks? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get my check. I'm gonna go find an ATM. <laughs> You know, the, 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 the funny, the funny part. I was watching what was it, the uh, Harry Potter movies with my uh, stepdaughter. She's twenty four years old. And I'm like, you know, uh, what's it, the the werewolf guy, Loop, 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 uh, Remus Lupin, David Lupin, Lupin. Lupin, yeah, Lupus, Lupin. I said, like, yeah, yeah, you know, he's the he's the crazy critic in uh, the Big Lebowski. And she's like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Like, All right, never. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you, you know when place. he goes when he goes to her place and she's flying, she's making her art. And the guy listening to the music and she's like, I'm like, All right, this is a hopeless case. And I'm done. Well, well, what you have to do is tell her that he is also the star of the island of Doctor Moreau. Oh, yes, Aries <laughs> himself. Right. <laughs> Hey, Blake, the best part of Lebowski is the nihilist. We still want the money. <laughs> still want the money. <laughs> still uh, want I the money, you. Lebowski. Hey, fuck you. I fuck you. And fuck you. Yeah, yeah. Flea's greatest performance <laughs> in cinema. Uh, I thought that was the chase. Yeah, I was the chase. <laughs> oh, well, here. You have your opinion. <laughs> uh, my number one, real quick, is everybody knows this. Izzy, what do you think my number one is? I got three of them. You said one already. The Rock. I think it's a bag of Cool Ranch nachos. No. Damn you people. <laughs> J- you ever said it? Welcome to The Rock. It's The, the Rock. Rock, oh. Con Air, they, and Face Off. There you yeah. go, motherfuckers. Yeah, the Holy Trinity. The Holy Trinity. Nothing gets better the in cinema. The Holy Trinity. We know Jason too well. Loved it. Love those films. And they make me laugh and smile every single time. 
The, the only sure reason did. they're not on my list, they're all two and a half hours a piece. And so it's like, I need some quick comfort. I, I don't want to have to sit through, you know, Steve I, Buscemi hitting on a girl in a tr- who may or may not be a ghost in a trailer park for 10 minutes. <laughs> I will say there are parts of Face Off, which is hilarious, but there are parts of Face Off. I'm like, whew, this is a long one. <laughs> Can we get through some of this? <laughs> you mean the beginning part, the middle Stop part it. and the ending part? Stop it. Uh, How real- dare you besmirch the name of Caster Troy, my beloved kitty who passed away two years ago. I didn't besmirch it. The writers <laughs> of that movie did. Uh, real quick, we'll do some honorable mentions. We'll get through this because we got some listeners here. Uh, I got I, like a ton of honorable mentions. Got, man. Hold on, Pick Blake. five. Five. Pick five. Uh, I did ten things I hate about you. Uh, man, that is honorable. I have Shawshank Redemption, Tombstone, and Jurassic Park, and my fifth one, Scream. I really enjoy Scream. Oh yeah, good uh, picks. Blake, what do you got for I five? Had oh, sorry, mentions. Jeff. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, I had Go ahead, Jeff. Mentions, uh, the Sandlot, Ten oh. Things I Hate About You, Office Space, Billy Madison, and Babe. Okay, Blake. Uh, Austin Powers. Which one? Man and Mystery. Okay. The Full Monty. There's uh-huh. something about Mary. Clueless, yes. It's a guilty pleasure. I don't have a problem with Clueless. That's a good one. Yeah. And uh, Goodwill Hunting. Okay. All right. And Groundhog Day. Oh, that's like, oh Groundhog Day. Oh, oh. That's a good one, Blake. Uh, Jim, you got anything? Uh, the only one that nobody has really said was the usual suspects. Oh. Oh. Hi, Zara. Didn't even think of that one. Uh, Another so- great feel good movie. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin, or I'm sorry, Steve and Izzy, what do you guys got over there? Uh, for ones that haven't been said, I'll go with uh, Wayne's World, Wayne's World 2, uh, and the Naked Gun trilogy. I fucking love those it's movies. I, I think they're all 90s. They are. Uh, I did look at those, Steve, because I, I remember growing up with them. Those were pretty funny. Oh, and Terminator 2, Judgment Day. <laughs> uh, because I was like... 12 or 13 when it came out, I was the perfect age. Um, Spawn. I love Spawn. Yeah. Spawn's great. Uh, also, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Oh, it's, shit. I, mean, yeah, I won't lie. It's probably one. my favorite Dracula movie, not because it's good, but because it's just, just batshit crazy. I've seen where the Boston sleeps. <laughs> yes. Got his accent, the puppets, the fucking more movies need to have like puppet battles at the beginning of their movies. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, Interview with the Vampire. Uh-huh. I like that movie. Mm. Uh, let's see here. Um, sorry. And some listener feedback here. We got from Nisi, favorite Indiana listener. Uh, she has Days and Confused, Clueless, Independence Day, Jurassic Park, Friday, and many, many more. Apparently, I watched a lot of movies in the 90s. Uh, How did nobody say Independence Day? Uh, I don't strange. think anyone did. Uh, we got oh, Independence Day is great. Yeah. Kevin Lane had Mallrats, Clerks, Days and <laughs> Confused, Pulp Fiction, and Big Lebowski. I like the call on Mallrats. Love it. Yeah. Love that movie. Uh, Joe Keaton, he had Hackers. Oh, Angelina Jolie gets naked. <laughs> uh, let's see. Johnny yeah. Lee Miller, isn't it? Johnny Lee, Johnny yep. Lee Miller, yep. yeah. Uh, Empire Records, Tombstone. Tommy Boy and a few good men. Uh, let's see. Here. Oh yeah, a few good men. That's very quotable. Kevin from Three Six Five and Nerdly Out Loud. He had Twister, Empire Records, Fight Club, <laughs> Hackers. Twister. Oh and, yeah, Twister. And Point Break. Uh, and then we yeah. Had, uh, let's see, Brian Hour. He had Cutthroat Island. Oh, God. Ooh. Oh, yes. Thank you, yes. Brian. He's like, Great you got to love pirates. Best pirate movie ever. Only pirate movie to bankrupt a studio. Uh, <laughs> well, there were plenty of others, I'm sure. <laughs> Twister had the flying cow, he says. Oh, I love Twister, too. Uh, Hackers. Hackers. Uh, Shawshank Redemption. Guy Code, if it is on, we will watch while scrolling through the channels. Good call. Oh, no. Oh, yes. This is not good. Star Wars Episode One: Phantom Menace. Yes. Tra- uh. Yes. Trade talks. But Star Wars was back on screen. That is true. That is true. It wasn't just trade talks. It was those fucking pod racers. Yeah, that was but 
the the problem was yeah, yeah it's like at least it wasn't complaining about sand so. I don't like sand gets in your butt crack of course I, like I killed them everywhere. all not Dang. like you. But the thanks, women, the children. Thanks to that movie, we were able to hone in on how to become a Jedi Master. You have to commit a genocide. Absolutely. Yes. Every single Jedi Master is committed to suicide. I am curious. Genocide. To, genocide. Genocide. I am curious. Uh, I'm curious what actually, Yoda did. Actually, now that you mention it, <laughs> most of them did suicide, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Darth Vader kind of <laughs> killed, killed himself going for the Emperor. Yeah. And I don't Luke. know, just... Having a bad heart. That was sort Luke of Luke like, kind of just faded the fuck away. Kylo. You know, say Darth Vader was by cop. Let, let's face it. Leia cop. died in space. Ugh. No, she's still alive, Steve. No. She's, got, she's got space magic because they're all just space wizards. Mary Poppins, y'all. She's just <laughs> she's just like her mother that she died of a broken heart. Mm. Mm, so Disney disease. Yes. <laughs> uh, Genie. The female perspective that will be here next week. So back off, Izzy. <laughs> uh, Groundhog Day. <laughs> Number four, Clerks. Number three, Edward Scissorhands. Ah. Seven. Uh, number two is seven. What's in the box? And number one, Princess Mononoke. Uh, oh, Princess Mononoke. Mononoke. That was close. Uh, oh, honorable... come on. Watch a Miyazaki film. Uh, num- honorable mention, she had Billy Madison being John Malkovich. Train spotters and my girl, my girl. Uh, let's see here. Uh, and she also had it's office train space. Spotting, but it's enough out of you on double secret probation. Uh, well, there might be another movie that's train spotters too. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Sean, we don't talk about that nerd. movie either. Uh, Even Pitts- though it's got David Carlisle in it, still. <laughs> uh, Sean and Pittsburgh nerd had half baked, Tombstone, Clerks, Empire Records. Oh, I forgot about this one, Armageddon. Good job, Sean. Uh, Half baked is high on my list. I'm gonna say Sean threw out four good ones and then ended with Arma fucking. Getting. I don't want to waste my. Uh, Kevin at Cincy Explorer had. <laughs> well, what? <laughs> what? What was that? I don't want to wait. I mean, yeah, you just I don't want to wait for that last train to Clarksville. <laughs> 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 Number five for Kevin at Office Space, Golden Eye, oh, Wayne's World, Grumpy Old Men. That's a good one. Camp Nowhere. I loved that as a kid. Uh, honorable mentions: Mrs. Doubtfire, My Cousin Vinny. Good one. Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore, and Big Daddy. And then finally, Doug, number one fan, said instead of rewatching thirty-year-old films, maybe Jason should finish watching Jessica Jones on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's no reason to finish that. Ugh. Anyways, uh, Steve, Izzy, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, oh, thanks for having oh, us. Thanks for having us. Even if we're on double secret, angry, no, 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 boner probation. Yeah, You're because not. we won't silence women. Yeah. You're not Izzy. Steve is. Oh. Just saying. Just well, saying. In case you can no. find me over at Everything I Learned from Movies, where we're continuing Patreon November. Did he just say I wasn't Izzy? Because I am Izzy. No, no, <laughs> no. He said you're not on double secret. You're not probation. on probation, babe. See, no, he, he has this weird thing where he doesn't Izzy. finish sentences. <laughs> he said I'm not Izzy. He said you're not, comma, comma Izzy. Comma Izzy. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't hear a comma. Did you hear a comma? <laughs> Izzy, well, comma. At least you're you Izzy and not Igsby. What he was the last time you were on. <laughs> well, thank you, comma Jason exclamation point. Uh, yeah, you can find us at Everything I Learned from Movies. All the major podcatchers. Uh, we're going into Deep Sember, yeah. where we talk about 1989 underwater horror movies. Yes, there were like six of them in that year, and very they were sp- all questionable. Very specific. They are fucking phenomenal. What are you talking about? This is one of my favorite genres. They are great bad movies. 1989 underwater horror, water underwater horror movies are one of my is my favorite genre. That's right. It's a very specific genre. <laughs> Hey, it's also I only I specifically only read uh, cat based murder mysteries. There's a lot more of them than you think there were. Apparently, at the end of the 80s, they were like, shit, I want to make a movie, but I only want one set. (laughs) Let's make it underwater. 
Yeah. Let's make it underwater and we'll have, you know, the, the, the dining, the mess hall and a tube room and uh, we'll throw in some monsters. Yeah. We only need like five actors. It's going to be great. Going to make a billion dollars. <laughs> but I want to make two billion dollars. Is he? Uh, uh, then you shouldn't have cast Robocop in the lead. <laughs> Let me get this right. Hold on. Is he? Comma. Uh, you have an Etsy shop that Hobie Pod has coupons. If you put in Hobie Pod, you get 15% off. Can you please tell me what your Etsy uh, page is? Nope. Wait, yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> it is Untidy Venus, like a goddess who's bad at housekeeping.etsy.com. Use Hobie Pod, get 15% off everything. And just to be clear, it's untidyvenus.etsy.com, not untidy <laughs> venus that's a goddess who's bad at housekeeping dot etsy.com yes, yes, untidy venus dot etsy.com yeah Comma. i've got uh i've got my prints i've got magnets bottle openers stickers enamel pins all kinds of stuff all uh made here pretty much in my basement rad art cat art dog art paracord yeah all kinds of incredible movie stuff monsters, check it out movie monsters who love kittens and those snack do you, you have do you have Cool Ranch in one of your rat arts yet? Um, I yeah, in the ratuary. There is a an adorable Dumbo hairless ratty along with like 32 other ratty muffins. Oh, I don't want the other 32. I just want Cool Ranch. <laughs> oh, so do you, you guys want me to like specifically make like a, a little Cool Ranch like button? Could you I yes. totally can. Could you wear him wearing a yellow Hobie shirt? <laughs> <laughs> We will work on it. Like, well, I'm with Hobie. <laughs> uh, I'm Hobie, and I approve this message. <laughs> let's do titles for the show, people. Uh, Jeff, you got anything? Yes, give me one second. Jim, you got yeah, anything? Man. Yes, I do. I Good. have. What is a breath of silence? <laughs> uh, a very patient podcast. Dry Gina. <laughs> that's what that's what happens when you marry your dad <laughs> God's frozen ejaculate yeah that was gonna be my suggestion small curd is nasty <laughs> and I don't want to wait till the last train to Clarksville <laughs> no you gotta say it right I don't want to wait for the last train to Clarksville <laughs> I hate you all. Jeff, what's yours? <laughs> I've got Gingerbread Boy. <laughs> what is a breath of silence? Stale trash and cream. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? Stale trash and cream. <laughs> okay. And Podcast. my pillows are on Veep. <laughs> uh, I have a bacon-wrapped episode. Uh <laughs> For Blake, I was 12 years old. Uh, <laughs> limp, <laughs> limp bacon. Limp bacon. Uh, what is a breath of silence? They killed Baby Yoda. I thought that would kill. That would kill people, man. <laughs> <laughs> that might get clicks. You're right. But no. uh, I'm not getting any more downloads. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I love small curd. <laughs> And I don't know why this made me laugh so much, but I really like this one. Apex Predator of the Moon. <laughs> Bamboo, colon, Apex Predator of the Moon. <laughs> Anyways, um, any suggestions, guys? What do you guys like? I already forgot what Jim's suggestions were. I, yeah. I like Apex Predator of the Moon myself. <laughs> I like limp, limp bacon. I like limp bacon. Mm, of course you like limp bacon. Jim, what, was, like limp bacon. what was yours of uh, the curd? Uh, small curd is nasty. Oh, okay. I do like what is a breath of silence. Yeah, that, yep. that seems to be the one everybody said, so let's go with that. Steve Steve approves what is a breath of silence. Uh, Steve Izzy, thanks for showing up. As always, you have a open door policy here anytime you want to come on, especially you, Izzy, not so much Steve. Comma. Yeah, I'm on, I'm on that probation <laughs> shit. I, I have to like come out of nowhere with a chair or like a wrestler. Just, <laughs> See, uh, don't worry. I'll put you on super secret double titty probation. Ooh, I'll, I'll be honest. 
when Joe Biden came down for his uh, speech on Saturday, I really thought he was going to have a chair in his arm when he or in his hands when he's coming down that long walkway. <laughs> right. And then here comes Bernie Sanders with the money in the bank suitcase. <laughs> Anytime, anywhere. <laughs> Wait a minute! This just runs up. Yeah. <laughs> that would be great. What happened here? Bernie Sanders is now president. Wait, a minute. what? What? <laughs> what just happened? He can't send the money in the, the bank population. and pinned them. <laughs> no Everybody's stunned, up. like when Lesnar pinned Undertaker. <laughs> like what? It would be even Trump's attorneys would be like, "Well, he had the money in the bank. Case dismissed. He's good. <laughs> we concede. We're out. He had the contract." <laughs> God, Roger says goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. From Walking Dead to Talking Heads, from comic books to TV sets, there's a history. Not so bad, there's the history. It's the history of bad, so bad. The history of bad, it's bad. The history of bad ideas. Oh, yes. You are listening to a hobie.